And uh, yeah, just wanted to uh, to get started. Um, first game is from Topo Player. Uh, he's uh, he's playing the white side of this. Um, and uh, yeah, let's go through. Um, interesting. So it looks like a queen's pawn game. Um, and uh, and Topo Player ends up winning with a good tactic at the end, uh, pinning the knight to the king. So that's yeah, that wins material. That should be enough for uh, for white to win here. And uh, yeah, um, let's uh, yeah, let's let's go back and look at it. Hey, good morning, Aphelion. How are you? Um, yeah. Uh, so so um, this is uh, uh, interesting. Um, so uh, this I think is called the Chagorin variation. But basically, um, yeah, I'm good. Good. S starting the weekend. Um, so uh, yeah, no, it's good. Uh, I. Um, yeah, it's it's nice to finally have a weekend day. Uh, my class just ended yesterday, so I'm like happy to be happy to be free from that. But um, yeah, it's good. Uh, but yeah, so this is Topo Player's game. Uh, Topo Player um, uh, uh, basically um, uh, sent this game over. Um, he plays the Chagorin variation, um, which is uh, which is two knight c three. Um, so uh, it went okay. Uh, I um, there. So um, one of the things that I do is I play the USCF rated uh, tournaments um, on chess.com. Um, they're pretty good. Uh, I've I've been doing them for probably you know three years or so. Um, and there's uh, there's four USCF rated tournaments a week at least on uh, on chess.com. Um, so if you have like a USCF membership, um, you can like join their club uh, on chess.com and uh, and play uh, USCF rated games. Um, the online rating system's a little bit weird. It's really deflated relative to uh, to the USCF rating system. Um, but uh, but I ended up getting um, I think there were there were five games and uh, but I didn't play the first round. And then so the four games I played, I went three and a half and uh, three and a half and a half, uh, three wins and one draw. Um, but they're good tournaments. Uh, and uh, I you know I, I really like the blitz ones in particular. Um, but, uh, it's interesting because it's sort of the same people, you know, it's, it's mostly the same people from week to week. Um, and, uh, you know, the players range from like, you know, probably 1200 to about 2250. Um, and, uh, it's good. It's fun. Um, uh, so yeah, so it went, it went well. Three and a half out of four. It's not bad. Uh, and, uh, yeah, there's another one today actually at 2 p.m. Eastern, um, which I'm probably going to do. Uh, but um, but yeah, chess. That's one of my favorite things about chess.com is they have that uh, they have that USCF rated play. Yeah, yeah. No, it was good. We I had some interesting games. Um, I had one really tough game out of um, I think it was the Sicilian. Uh, but um, I the the drawn game was actually really interesting because he got a really good um attack. Uh, he basically got a really good queenside attack. But I was lucky enough to get a, a perpetual check at the end. Um. Yeah, yeah, no, no, totally, Aphelion. Uh, did I? Uh, did we play in that? I, I don't. Uh, to be completely honest, I don't remember if uh, if uh, if we played in that USCF tournament. But um, I uh, I like that one. Um. Uh, yeah. So so here, uh, two knight c three um, is interesting. Uh, huh. That's. I mean, that's cool. I um. Uh, interesting. Um, I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember the game. Oh, really? <laughs> That's cool. No, sorry, I missed that one. I've I've forgotten that Aphelion. But um, uh, yeah, and I uh, I played some good games against Kiro last night actually too. Um, he uh basically we we played a number of blitz games uh, while I was doing the um the USC. I was like between rounds in the USCF tournament, but I, I was still able to get a few games in against Kiro. They were good. Uh, we should probably look one of those over if um. Uh, I have some open slots for tonight. If anyone wants to send over uh, games, I have two open slots. Um, but if those don't get filled, ma filled maybe I'll uh, I'll look at um, my game against Kiro or one of the games uh, against Kiro uh, from last night because they were interesting. They were basically good, um, you know, very good, well played openings, and then um, uh, uh, the middle games were were pretty complicated. But um, but especially the opening theory in the games that I played against Kiri. Yeah, no, 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 sure. I, I just wanted to make sure that was cool too. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, some interesting games. I, I would mostly want to focus on the um, uh, the the opening theory because I think uh, there's some good stuff there. Um, hey, what's up? Uh, what's up, Tarash? How are you? Good morning. Um, yes, but so anyways, Knight C3 is a little bit uh, is a little bit offbeat against uh, uh, D5. 
Um, it's not bad necessarily, but um, one of the key parts of um, uh, yeah, it's going. Um, uh, this is my first day without um, without my class, my last class hanging over my head. Uh, my next class started yesterday on the same day that my last class finished, but uh, but this new one is not going to have nearly as much class time. So hopefully I'll get some opportunities to uh, to move my schedule around. Um, yeah, so uh, so basically here, you know, Knight C3 is a move that develops quickly, um, and uh, it but it ha comes with the downside that it blocks the C2 pawn. So with Knight C3, um, you know, the standard Queen's Gambit. Uh, uh, Queen's Gambit type line C4 um, challenges the center. Yeah, sure. Uh, let me. You know, you can post it here or wherever. Uh, wherever, Trosh. Uh, definitely interested in uh, in, in uh, hearing. Uh, yeah. Uh, happy to answer any, any questions. Um, but yeah. So um. So yeah. So Knight C3 uh, is pretty solid. Like Knight C3, I think is pretty um pretty solid here. Uh, but it ha comes with a drawback that uh that um C4 can't be played. Um, is you know the question is how important is that in the um, uh, in the um, you know in basically the the queen's pawn opening uh, that I'm not sure about but um, uh, you know it, it is it is interesting and it is a quicker development um, black can match with c5 here uh, and sort of invert the situation it's a little bit different because um, you know there's not that immediate queen a4 uh, and queen takes d5 type threat that's in the um, uh, the standard queen's pawn game, uh, but overall, you know, this is pretty interesting. Um, uh, so, so yeah, so I guess I would say, you know, the the main line here is c4. Knight f3 is, um, you know, a similarly developing move uh, that doesn't have some of the same downsides. Knight c3 is playable, but again, like I, I pretty much um, would steer towards uh, the main lines here. Um, it's the most challenging for the d5 pawn. Knight c4. And then c6, and then knight c3, and uh, and you get the same development with a more aggressive um, threat on d on the d5 square. Um, hey, good morning, Mantha. How are you? Um, but yeah, so so, uh, so this threat on uh, this threat on d5, it's um, uh, potentially pretty. You know, it's it's one of the key characteristics of the queen's pawn game. Um, but knight c3, I don't know particularly well. Uh, I know it's a uh, hey. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mnick, for uh, the um, the follow. Uh, appreciate it. Um, good, cool. S sounds good. Uh, sounds good, uh, Angie, agent. I uh, hope you're in uh, f uh, ready for some chess. Um, uh, thank you for joining the stream. Um, but yeah, so knight c3 basically um, uh, has this advantage of um, uh, you know attacking the d5 pawn early. But uh, at the disadvantage of being unable to challenge with the c4 pawn later, um, knight c3 probably pairs well with e4. Pawn takes e4, knight takes e4. Um, cool. Uh, is that? <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, that's a good point. I, I get a lot of spam. Um, is one of the things that uh, that is true about my email. Um, yes. Uh, and uh, you know, I am reachable on that email too. But um, I don't know. It it's. Uh, uh, I I don't check it super well, uh, or delete or delete a lot of spam. Um, uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, e four I think here is um, uh, yeah no 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 it's years and years of spam um, that has not been deleted so just ignored. I, I check it every day. I check it regularly, but the spam uh, the spam is um, uh, yeah is there. I should just keep running it up. I, I should see if I could, could get to a hundred thousand. To be honest, um, I, I am curious about that. Uh, not too bad. Um, uh, yeah, but yeah. So, anyways, um, this uh, this basically e4 threat can come 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 next. So, you know, if White's not going to challenge with c4, then White should probably challenge with um, with e4 instead. Uh, options here: Knight f6, Bishop g5, Bn d7. Knight f3, g6, e3, and it's sort of transposed into a relatively normal queen's pawn game, um, with the one exception that the c2 pawn doesn't challenge uh, the d5 pawn on c4. Um, that's that's really the the main differentiator between knight c3 and c4 here. Um, Bishop e6 is not in the opening book. Uh, that's sort of an inefficient way to defend the um, the e6 the e5 pawn or the d5 pawn. Like you know, this basically restricts the bishop's mobility. Um, 
I think c6, keeping the bishop file open, is probably the best response. Uh, knight f6 is also fine. Um, I understand the need to uh, want to develop pieces here, but bi the bishop on e6 doesn't really, um, uh, you know, the bishop on e6 doesn't really develop the bishop. I mean, it sort of sticks it on e6, and then it's sort of um, restricted and not particularly strong there. Uh, so, um, so yeah, knight c3, bishop e6, bishop f4, knight c6. We're, we're in sort of our own type of uh, unusual theory here. Um, sort of interested here, actually, we had an opportunity to play f5. Uh, this was a master game that was played at some point. Um, but uh, the bishop looks awkward on e6. I, th I think bishop e6 is not a playable move. Um, yeah, no, no, this f5, uh, we actually, there actually was a game that took place with um, knight, f knight c3, bishop f4, and, e, uh, and d4, and e d5, and bishop e6. Um, and then it went f5. But clearly some master was trying to do something uh, unusual here, so um, I don't know. Uh, that could be a very interesting line, but anyways, um, knight c3, so, so, you know, knight c3 uh, is a playable move, and at the end of the day, these types of things come, come down to theory. Um, but uh, objectively speaking, um, knight c3 is somewhere down the list in terms of, uh, in terms of playability. Like, I think really just traditional moves like knight f3, c4, um, you know, e3 is number three, but, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I mean, you know, there is some, there is some truth to that, uh, Tarash. Um, it is, uh, you know, it is definitely, um, uh, phasing, but, um, but yeah, anyways, c4, knight f3, those are the types of things that, um, that I would think, uh, I would think that you should, should uh, be leaning towards playing here. Unless you really know the specific theory for knight c3 well, um, go with the things that are that are well explored and objectively better. Um, there's plenty of time to outmaneuver your opponents. Um, it doesn't have to be by accepting an inferior opening line, um, if you're up to. Uh, yeah, no, 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 for sure. Um, so yeah, so it's up to you. Uh, c4, e6, knight f3, knight f6, and this is sort of just generally how it goes, but... Um, your choice. Your choice is white. Anyways, uh, let's let's play into the middle game and see sort of what's going on. Um, bishop to g4, bishop e2, and here, you know, now we're now we're in sort of an interesting situation. Um, the bishops. Uh, hey, thank you very much uh, uh, for. Um, uh, yeah, no, thank you very much for um, uh, the follow at end of a circle. Um, interesting, uh, cool screen name. Um, thank you very much for uh, for, uh, for following and uh, for joining the stream today. Um, so yeah, so knight g4, knight f3, castle's queenside, knight, um, uh, knight b5, and, uh, and here, you know, basically, um, white has, uh, lost some material on, um, on a2, uh, but the middle game is still complicated. Um, it's white to move, so moves like bishop takes c7 and followed by knight e5 are interesting, um, but we're basically in a situation where things are going to become very tactical. Uh, there's a lot of volatility here, um... But uh, I actually sort of want to look at this um, this knight c3. So, so basically, in terms of improving this game, I think um, you know the main thing that I'm going to point to is just uh, is just tactical study. Um, uh, yeah, sure, no problem, Tarash. Thank you for uh, yeah, no, uh, you you um, yeah, very curious uh, what your question is. You, you've uh, you've built it up uh, a good amount, so I'm sure it's a good question. Um, but yeah, so bishop takes c7, bishop takes d8. A lot of trading, um, and uh, and White um, ends up winning with a cool tactic here. Um, so definitely a good some some good tactical study. Good job pinning the Knights of the King and winning. Uh, you know the material there should be decisive. Um, at the level you're at, a topo player, I would really just um, say spend a lot of time on um, Chess.com Puzzle Rush, Chess.com Puzzle Battle, or Chess Tempo or CT hyphen ART. Um, they're all good programs and they'll all work. Uh, but uh, but tactical study I think is the most important thing. Um, this, the kind of volatility in this game. So like basically all these bounces here. Um, if you uh, if you clear out uh, uh, if you clear out these these bounces, um, I think uh, I think you're basically going to be in in a lot better shape. Um, you know your goal here is to get to this point right here on the curve, and just keep it there for the rest of the game. Um, you don't really want to be, you know, bouncing down like that, and uh, and your opponent's providing you opportunities to really, you know, get get a lead and, and hold it here. 
Um, so that's the uh, uh, and Puzzle Storm, I guess. I, I should I should uh, I need to uh, figure out um, uh, Puzzle Storm. I'll take a look at it today. I'm I'm curious to see how that um, how that works, but uh, should be interesting. You know, I, I I'm sure any tactical trainer will work. Um, and uh, and Puzzle Storm is not one that I'm familiar with, but I'm sure that it works. Uh, so um, this uh, you know basically this. Um, uh, stra opening strategy here um, is uh, is kind of an interesting way to play it. Um, I think an e4 break here is probably the best idea. Um, Black sort of needs something to challenge the center here, um, but uh, but yeah. Um, anyways, g3 and uh, and White's in pretty good shape. Um, uh, yeah. Um, Let's see. So yeah, so I guess there, um, uh, white, you know, white is winning. But I, I would consider this knight c3 move, um, because it's not a normal move out of d4, d5, and uh, and if you play, um, uh, you know, if you play more fundamentally, uh, you know, well explored and fundamental openings like knight f3, um, there's no real, uh, there's no real lines in um, uh, the queen's pawn game in which f4 gets played. So, uh, so a move like knight f3 has all the developmental advantages of knight c3, but doesn't have the developmental disadvantage of, uh, of sticking the c2 pawn. Um, here, like bishop f4, something like that, uh, is fine. Um, but, uh, but a key characteristic of, uh, of white's game in the queen's pawn game is the ability to challenge uh, the d5 pawn. Um, and you lose that to some extent with, uh, with knight to c3. Um, this is still an opening line. I mean, you know, basically... Uh, I can show you the theory for it. Knight f6, bishop g5, bnd7, knight f3, g6, e3. But it's basically just an unchallenging line for black. Um, you know, without the without c4 there, there's not really that much tension in the center. Uh, there's nothing that black's really attacking. Um, maybe bishop e2, h4, h5 is an idea. But uh, but overall, um, uh, I think you're in. You know, I, I think I think you're solid, but not you know not pushing black as um, as hard as uh, as as you could be here. Um, there there's more aggressive ways for white to play it, and and ways that uh, uh, cement white's um, white's initiative a little bit better. Uh, not saying c4 has to be played, but it's generally played in queen's pawn games. Um, but up to you. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. Um, once this game gets tactical, you know, I, I feel like, you know, I, I generally feel like tactic, you know, once the game really becomes tactical, it's like you either saw the tactic or you didn't. Um, uh, you know, there's less strategy and less preparation. Um, at the end of the day, just tactics training uh, will help you uh, make these games a lot less volatile and, uh, and push, um, uh, you know, push games in your direction once you um, have to play chess as... The grandmasters always say. The grandmasters always say this is just a position where you need to play chess, and you want to make those situations where you're playing chess to be as good for you as possible. You want to be stronger in all of those situations where you've left theory and you're just uh, playing tactical and positional chess against your opponent. Um, the best way to do that is to make your tactics extremely strong. Um, some strategic training is also good, positional play, um, but uh, but tactics are are the quickest way to improve in in that dimension. Um, so that's where I'm, I'm saying uh, you should suggest you should uh, allocate time topo. Uh, rook to f1 here is an awesome tactic. Uh, put the game away for you. Um, but there are a few other opportunities here where uh, where there were tactical improvements. And uh, and with enough study, you'll be catching on to almost every single one of them, um, which is awesome and a great way to um, a great way to play. Uh, there's a lot. Of, I think there's a lot of potential in terms of improving uh, topo, and I think that's where your time um, uh, is best spent. Uh, just you know, puzzle battle, puzzle rush. Um, uh, if you're a lead chess person, I guess puzzle storm. Um, but uh, you know, so, some type of tactical trainer. Um, if you spend you know an hour a day for a month on it, I guarantee you'll improve. Uh, no, you know, no question about it. Um, anyways, uh, that's um, okay. Cool. What's your question, Tarash? I was curious about this. Um. Uh, I'll just set up. Aphelion is uh, Aphelion is the the center of the last game, or the next game. Sorry. Um, uh, 
It's been built up. I'm curious about it. Uh, and this is uh, this is a Felion's game. Um, uh, I'll try not to get into it too much till we hear this uh, this question of suspense. Uh, but yeah, so so a Felion's game is uh, out of the Grunfeld. So I think this will give a good opportunity to take a look at the Grunfeld. Um, it's a very good opening, an opening that I play as Black a uh, good percentage of the time. And uh, overall, um, you know, it's pretty interesting. Uh, allows for, um, you know, good piece play by Black and, uh, you know, is a standard high-level opening that's not, um, uh, you know, that's not refuted. Um, anyways... Uh, let's uh, let's start taking a look at this game while uh, while Tarash um, uh, is working on his question. I'm curious about it. Uh, this is an interesting Grunfeld. So okay, so this is the standard Grunfeld formation. Uh, it involves g6, knight f6, and d5 played in the first moves. Usually with d5 is the f the third move. Um, the main line here is knight pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn, e4, knight takes c3, pawn takes c3. Bishop g7. Um, that move order, I, I strongly suggest learning. Uh, I basically think that um, this, uh, you know, this um, uh, move order um, is something that you know most, you, they, you know, at the very least, is something you should have some type of vague um, recognition of. Uh, even if the Grunfeld's not your opening, and even if you're not a d4 player, um, this is a uh, this is an opening um, uh, strategy that uh, you know that you probably should know. You should know how the Grunfeld goes. Um, the main uh, you know the main um, response after this is uh, c5. Um, you know Black does this to challenge the center as quickly as possible. Um, you know there are lines where uh, where um, uh, uh, Black plays d5 here. Um, I guess maybe not this early, but. Uh, something like um, you know rook b1 and then allows the c3 pawn to um, to be hung. Uh, that is a line, not a preferred line for white. Um, but uh, but black's basically black's goal is to challenge um, the center as, as um, you know strongly as possible as quickly as possible. And uh, and on pawn, and pawn takes c5, bishop takes um, c3, and uh, and white is in uh, pretty good. Um, uh, you know, and basically white is in, is, or black is in pretty good shape. Uh, so c5 isn't really a pawn that can be taken too comfortably. And, uh, you know, a after this, bishop takes c3 and, and black is winning. Um, so that's the mainline Grunfeld, uh, just in case, just, just so people know. Um, white does an early deviation here, a uh, pretty common one, uh, knight f3. Um, uh, this, you know, this comes up a lot. Uh, here, basically, black just goes along his normal strategy, waiting for e4, potentially. So, like, e4, knight takes c3, pawn takes c3, c5. Um, uh, here, I think that maybe knight c6 got played. Um, I just want to go make sure we're in the right game here. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so, or sorry, we're in that opening line. Um, but, yeah, knight f3, and then e4, and then the same the same concept. So if, if white transposes with knight f3, you do the same the same general concept. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, interesting, Tarash. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, there are definitely variations where white gi uh, willingly gives up the rook on a1. That definitely happens. Um, yeah, no worries. Uh, no worries, Trash. No, it's a good question. Um, I guess I would say I would allocate more um, more time to tactics, uh, probably. Um, uh, you know, I think you're, what, you're an expert, right? I mean, or you're an A, a player to expert. Um, I guess there you really can start allocating more time to things that aren't opening uh, or that aren't tactics. But um, yeah, one hour of t uh, intense tactical training per day I think is good. Um, uh, I don't know. Um, uh, you feel stupid when you play chess. Uh, no, I mean, um, uh, you know, I guess I would say, um, you know, you can come up with ideas. Uh, so, um, I don't know. I guess I would say if you're playing chess, um, you, uh, you know, you're interested in 
maximizing you're interested in first having fun with it and second um, maximizing your outcome right so I think what you're doing in terms of studying is great and I think that it's hard to do study like that without uh, you know improving um, uh, do you feel like you're losing most of your games in terms of focus errors or where do you think that um, you know where do you think uh, you're having issues in terms of improving your game because um, your your ta your training um, uh, regimen sounds great to me. I mean, an hour of tactical training a day with um, uh, with you know opening study um, that that should work. Uh, you know, are there particular ways in which you're losing? Um, yeah. So, okay. So chaotic positions. I guess what I would say is um, uh, you know um, tactics. Uh, I mean, basically, the goal of tactics is so that you can pick out, um, you know, p you can pick out tactical opportunities that are available for you as the game is going on. Um, it's uh, it's surprising. It's it's unfortunate that you feel like your tactical study, you know, you you have such a good um, uh, tactics rating, but you're unable to, um, uh, you know, convert that during a game. Um, interesting. Uh, I guess I would say there. Um, uh don't yeah don't um uh i mean i you know first i don't i'm not um the most familiar with the french uh but um i i think the ability to pick out um unsound lines is important uh you know if basically your opponent plays some weird triple pawn sack that's the point at which you need the strongest um uh okay cool um, all right, so yeah, so um, you know the book that I use for that is uh, is called the Ideas Behind the Chess Openings. Um, it's an old classic book by uh, by Fine, and I think it was pretty strong. Um, Fine's book uh, was really good at um, uh, you know Fine's book was basically you know really good at explaining what um, uh, you know what plans you should do and what plans you should do in sidelines. Um, uh, Interesting. And when you say puzzle rating, do you mean puzzle battle or, or that is that that's like um, is that that's not puzzle rush or puzzle battle. That's like its own like puzzles section. Um, I think I've used that at some point before they had puzzle rush, but um, gotcha. Yeah. OK. Uh, makes sense. Um, I, uh, I don't know that one super well. Um Interesting. Interesting question. Yeah, interesting question, Ed Um. Uh. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think tactical, um, tactical study. Ne your tactics need to be extremely strong. Um. You know, if your opponent plays a deviation that you're unfamiliar with, um, tactical study and good uh, understanding of the position, I think, will help you. Um. You know, navigate that as well as possible. Uh. You know, in a situation in which you're thrown out of the, um, you know, your your opening preparation, um, you need to have a good understanding of how to evaluate positions and how to um, tactically, you know, and how to how to basically first seize every tactical opportunity, and then second, um, evaluate positions so that you can come up uh, with you know the appropriate um, uh, strategic plan there. Um, I don't know. Uh, I guess I would say. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is, tactical study will never hurt you. So puzzle battle, puzzle rush, uh, maybe, you know, faster t puzzles as opposed to slower puzzles will help with your decisiveness and kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, practical play. Um, but it sounds like what you're doing is correct. I mean, it sounds like you're really, um, you know, on the right track to be improving. I'm sorry that you're not receiving good results on that. Um, in terms of coming up with plans... Uh, I guess I would say, um, you know, ideas behind the chess openings by fine is helpful. Uh, then you can understand kind of what types of strategies you're supposed to play in each opening and how you could um, do that. Uh, potentially, um, you could try to look at um, master games for plans, but I would go with like a mass of... Um, uh, yeah, uh...
Yeah, I mean, you can generate... It, it sounds like you're going for... You're having issues in chaotic situations, you said. So, um, so the things that I would assess there are like... Um, uh, you know, you need your tactics to be as good as possible so that you're not missing potential opportunities. Um, if you're, uh, you know, your opponents may um, put you into positions where they know the theory better than you do. Um, but good understanding of the opening fundamentals uh, is probably, um, uh, you know, is probably the most, um, you know, efficient way to, to learn plans. Yeah, I think that that might be right. Um, especially if you feel like you're in a rush or in a uh, in a rut, Tarash. Um, welcome, FIFA boy. How are you? Uh, if you're in like a rut, then um, uh, you know, basically go for um, tactical play. You know, basically uh, uh, in increase your ca uh, tactical study, and uh, and I think that should at least uh, get you a few games. Um, maybe I'd move towards faster games. Um, I feel like if you play a lot of blitz games, those sort of um, uh, equilibrate more quickly. If you, you can play a lot of blitz games, so you can um, uh, get kind of more quickly to the rating that you should actually be at. Um, I, I think, yeah, I think that's um, a, uh, a key part of it. So, yeah, I think doubling your tactics, I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in that. I think do as many tactics as possible. Um, you want to maximize on given positions. Um, and then uh, if you feel like you're having issues with plan generation, um, uh, go with the uh, ideas behind the chess openings. But I, I'd go with those two um, if you're asking me what I think. Um, but, uh, but the most important thing is, uh, is to make sure... Yeah, I mean, I think that's... No, I think that's for sure. If, if you do that, Tarash, and I would be shocked if you didn't, uh, if you didn't improve. Um, I, think that's, uh, I think that's the way to go, Tarash. Um, Give that a shot, and then uh, you know maybe play a few more like speed chess games just to sort of get a feel for um, you know where exactly you are. Uh, like play you know speed ch play maybe five uh, play ten five minute games today, um, see what your performance rating is, and then do two to three hours of tactics every day for four months, which is great. I, I can't imagine you doing that many tactics and uh, and not having a positive result. Um, do that many tactics per day, and then um, uh, and then do like you know at the end of that uh, a couple days where you play ten five minute games and see what the performance rating is. I'd be very surprised if it didn't go up. Um, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, I've I've played through that a few times. I used to have um, the chess based modules for that one, uh, Tarash. Um, I, I've probably gone through that two or three times. Uh, those uh, those five three three four problems by uh, by Polger. Um, that is a uh, uh, yeah, that's a great that's a great book. I, I've probably gone through that two or three times on on Chess Base. Um, chess Base, they just basically line up those puzzles for you. Like they go from one to five, three, three, four, and then uh, and then they they test you on it, which is great. It's a, it's a good uh, it's a good um, choice. Uh, but yeah, thanks uh, thanks to Rush. Um, uh, I, yeah, I would wait more. I if you have the time, put more time into to to, um, to, uh, to tactics. Um, I don't know that method, but I um, uh, I think that's you know I think that that's an effective way to go about it. Um, okay, back to Ophelion's game. Um, this uh, this is a really interesting game. Um, here I think basically castles, bishop d3, c5. Um, c5 is really interesting. Uh, White has played somewhat of an unchallenging uh, you know on Grunfeld here. Uh, basically here. You know, I, I see pawn takes d5 more frequently, um, but knight takes d5 has been waiting, and c4 has been waiting to play uh, take c5. Um, so c5 is actually a really interesting idea. Um, in terms of the most popular ideas, c6 here is uh, transposes this into um, a uh, you know um, a sort of like a Slav type formation. Um, it's a good question, random. Um, I like uh, I like the Italian game. Um, I think it's really simple and uh, allows for you to basically play a game that isn't going to be um, uh, too um, like basically there's 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 not that many ways Italian game can go horribly wrong. Uh, you know, you play D th knight c knight f3 bishop c4 d3 knight c3 and you have a solid center and black doesn't really have a tremendous way of attacking you. Um, you need you will have attacking opportunities on the bishop or on the knight on f6 with the bishop on g5, um, and the game is actually very playable with relatively simple concepts. Um, I like the Italian game. Uh, 
It can sometimes get very tactically complicated, but that's when you have your tactical training to fall back on. Um, Italian game paired with a uh, uh, really good tactical background, I think, is a really good way to do it. Um, uh, you know, basically, you you will generate complicated positions, but they'll be very tactical, and you will have the pattern recognition skills required to win out of it. Uh, open games like that are very simple, good beginner games, easy to play, um, and uh, and they don't lead to too many traps. I mean, as a um, Italian game player, you know, what are the traps that you can run into? Like the elephant gambit potentially. I mean, they're, they're, the number is relatively low. Um, it's just a very, very solid, comfortable opening to play um, as uh, as white. Um, you know, d4 has some unusual traps in it. Uh, you know, uh, requires a, uh, you know basically a, a solid understanding of positional play. Um, against d4, you know, I, I suggest maybe the Grunfeld, um, but uh, but the um, uh, Slav like d4, d5, c4, c6 um, is a uh, uh, you know, a good, um, uh, you know, d4, d5, c4, c6, I think is, is pretty solid. Um, that plays out pretty well. Uh, you know, other ideas are like, you know, potentially, um, uh, the, the Dutch. Um, but yeah, no, no, totally trash. Um, I, you know, my, my answer is going to be really frequently do more tactics. Um, but, uh, you know, do more tactics until you're an expert or master. Uh, is going to be almost universally my response to most um, most training questions, um, but uh, I can do what I can to also uh, to look at you know the strategic concepts and the openings here. It also does depend on what type of player you are, um, but the combo of uh, the combo of super strong tactical uh, training and um, and an open game like um, the uh, the Italian game um, works pretty well. Uh, and, and should be something that you can do as a, you know, as a 1300 rated player. Um, but it's a really good question, Amet. Uh, that, that's just my opinion. I'm sure other people will have um, uh, uh, different approaches. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I like, I, I didn't know what that woodpecker method was, uh, uh, Tarash, but I, yeah, I like that. Um, the main point is, uh, is um, yeah, no, totally, Agent. Uh, thank you very much for um, uh, for asking. So the main um, the main uh, Grunfeld is this: it's d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, d5, pawn takes pawn. So so this game deviated. Uh, knight f3 is a sideline. Um, pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn, um, e4, knight takes c3, pawn takes c3, bishop g7. Um, this is, uh, this is, um, no, no, feel free to ask questions. I, you know, I'm, I'm super happy to answer any questions and, uh, uh, can definitely, um, uh, you know, give my best answer. Um, but a lot of these things end up being matters of taste. Uh, so Bishop G7 and basically your focus towards, um, uh, you know, your focus towards the A1 rook, um, and then, uh, you know, continuing onward, Knight F3, C5 is also a key move for black. Um, this is a uh, this is how you do this. Um, yeah, no, the Grunfeld is pretty common. Um, it uh, it seems to you know I, I like it as black. Um, it you know this this bishop uh, can create some tactical possibilities. Um, but but yeah, no no problem, agent. Uh, I think it's an important thing that we all uh, we all learn and understand what it is. Um, even if you're a D4 player, or even if you're an E4 player, and even if you're um, playing something different uh, against D4 as black. Um, you should have, a, I think, understanding uh, what it is specifically uh, is important. Um, Grunfeld is a good opening. I mean, it's a good way to challenge. Uh, it, it's a good way to open up the position a bit as uh, as black against um, uh, against um, uh, white's d4. Um, d4 can lead to a lot of kind of closed positions, um, and if you prefer open positions, uh, it, it definitely pushes the game in that direction. Um, uh, but here there's a sideline, you know, there are multiple sidelines, um, uh, you know, uh, usually sidelines are on the third move and not the fourth move, but this is a, uh, this is a sideline too. Um, Black should just sort of go about his normal, uh, play. Um, the one sideline of significance is queen to b3, it's called the Russian variation. Here it's pawn takes c4, queen takes c4, and then, um, castles. 
this is uh, yeah, this is called the Russian variation. Um, it's usually knight f3 and queen b3 played in uh, played in the Grunfeld. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think all I think everything is good. You know, it's one of these things. I, I guess I'm sort of a cynic, but um, uh, I guess what I feel like most coaches do is they don't tell you to do tactics as much as you should. Um, because, you know, I think tactics are the most efficient way that someone gets to expert. Um, I'm, again, very cynical about these types of things, but I feel like if a coach um, doesn't tell you to do tactical training um, and just, uh, you know, basically keeps giving you lessons for a longer and longer period of time, uh, they, I, they're not really helpfully, um, uh, you know, increasing your development. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, tactics training is not something that, um, uh, you know, the coaches can teach. It's something that you have to do on your own. Um, and, and, you know, there's not, there's not really much reason to give someone something that, that you can't teach them. But I would say, like, you're, you're sort of on your, you're on your own when it comes to, um, to tactics training. But at the same time, doing that homework is the most efficient way that you can improve and move forward with your game, um, up until a very high level. Um, you know, I, I have a classic book here, which is called um, Rapid Chess Improvement. Uh, and, um, you know, basically this book uh, was something that I read relatively early. I, I read it probably when I was about, um, uh, when I was about 12. Uh, and it gives an excellent tactical, like, regimen. But I think its approach is exactly right. It says, you know, don't don't worry so much at this point about um, you know positional play or openings. You can always go back and learn those later. Um, what you really need to, to learn quickly is um, uh, is you know tactical training, um, and that's not something a coach can provide. That's something that you really have to do on yourself. Um, you know, my value as someone giving lessons is sort of like. I can give you strategic concepts, and I can give you, um, uh, you know, and I and I can, you know, go through openings and try to make some improvements there. Um, but there's, it's like the core, like it's like the core of your chess um, uh, strength. This this, um, you know, uh, your tactical strength has to be there, or the other pieces are not going to work. Um, uh, it's up to you. Um, I like uh, I like faster tactics trainers like Chess.com Puzzle Battle, Chess.com Puzzle Rush. Uh, those are the ones that I use the most frequently myself, but they all work. Um, it depends on what time control you're training for. If you're training for game in 60 or less, then I would say sure do lots of uh, do lots of Chess.com Rapid, um, you know Puzzle Battle, Puzzle Rush. Um, but if you're training for like game in three hours or, or some variant of that. Um, uh, you know, then, then, you know, doing chess.com puzzles, uh, from the beginning to the end, um, is helpful, uh, and just calculating all the way through. Um, but I'm going to be a big advocate of, uh, this book, but you don't have to, like, the book's not that important. The main point of this book is it's really focuses on, uh, uh, how to get to expert, um, using tactical training. And I, and I think that's the, um, uh, that's, you know, the goal. Yeah, I think um, uh, you know, I think basically his focus is correct. You know, he he in his book he basically gets from twelve hundred to two thousand really quickly. It's there's a lot of value in that for a um, uh, you know for a recreational chess player. That's really what people want. Um, you know, uh, you know to get to two thousand, then you have to go back and learn you know uh, some of the more theoretical things that um, uh, you um, you know you have skipped over in your improvement. Uh, you know that's where you get from um, you know two thousand to twenty two, twenty three hundred. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think I think that's right. I, but I think that this way is actually um, uh, you know a more effective way to get to two thousand. I think. USCF, I, I don't know, it's some, some type of, uh, I think USCF, uh, but it's something like that. Um, it's a, the perfect book to do exactly that improvement. Um, if you don't have, uh, you know, and to do that improvement quickly, um, it's very effective. And it's basically just telling you what I'm telling you, which is just, if you spend enough time on tactical study, you will catch all the opportunities in games. Um, a lot of people are focused on theory. Uh, you can go back and learn theory later. Uh, I mean, 
you know, I wouldn't say all your opening training, but I definitely think, um, you know, uh, adding as much tactical training as possible will never hurt you. Do, doing, um, you know, doing as many tactics as you can is never going to make your game worse. Uh, so, you know, if you can, if you, ideally you would be a bit more balanced, but, um, but I'm definitely, uh, uh, in favor of the strategy, do as many tactics as you can, become very tactically strong. Um, because, you know, I can just tell you, knowing Masters, all the Masters have done it. Um, and, uh, and I think, um, you know, ideally, uh, people would be pretty transparent about it. Yeah, I think that will be very helpful, to rush. You've shown me enough games where you get um, great theoretical concepts out, uh, and, uh, and really cool openings, and you, you've sent a number of games where you've had very cool openings. Um, but, uh, but I think, you know, if you're able to um, catch up on the tactical side of things, um, you won't run into situations in which you're playing ta you're playing an opening and uh, and the situation falls apart in the middle game. I think that's way too common. Uh, so, um, yeah, no, no, no. I really, I really think that's where uh, where you will get the best returns. Um, you know, this this big improvement, twelve hundred to two thousand, uh, is uh, is doable almost entirely with tactical study. Um, and it's just something that I, you know, I can't coach. I think you just have to be self-motivated and do it. Um, but I think that if you do, uh, you will get very good returns, uh, you know, reasonably quickly out of it. Um, uh, yeah, no, no, um, I think, uh, No, I think if you can get, um, uh, yeah, no, no, I, I think, I think you really can get a lot further, especially if you've learned the other way around, uh, where you're just doing, you know, theoretical concepts. Um, I think, uh, I think that the tactical training has an even bigger return in that case. Um, okay. Anyways, uh, this is, um, uh, you know, this is an interesting opening. Uh, an early C5 out of the Grunfeld. Um, thank you very much, uh, Sib, for the, um, uh, the follow. Uh, I appreciate it, and thank you very much for joining the stream. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, yeah, no, no, I mean, you know, the, at the end of the day, all of the study is going to be helpful. Uh, you know, either the, you know, the pawn structures become very important, um, but the most immediate thing that you can fix is, uh, is your tactical strength uh you know it's it's there's no shortcuts you just need to put in the time um but uh but it'll really help your game when it does uh anyways uh let's let's take a look at this uh i've um uh gotten a bit distracted from this game uh this is Aphelion's game Aphelion plays the grunfeld with a really early c5 that's um an interesting way to play it uh, I like the move. Um, I've played. I'm. I'm thinking about moving to d4, d5, c4, c5 myself. Um, but I don't know this particularly well in the Grunfeld. Uh, in uh, the Grunfeld, I play c6, which is the main line, um, and uh, and play do things like play my bishop to g4, play my knight to d7, and then play my um, queen to b6 after uh, White plays queen to b3. Um, that uh, that seems to work fairly well. But c5 has some interesting tactical concepts um, that I think uh, it's worth uh, it's worth looking at here. Um, uh, so yeah, c6. I mean, c6 is somewhat unchallenging. Uh, I I completely agree. Uh, c6 goes for solid over challenging to um, white center. Uh, you're you're right about that. Um, but on the other hand, you know it it is solid. Uh, so you know if you look at this, it's probably a ninety percent play. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's right, and you, that doesn't mean you should play something just because it's a 90% play. Um, but c5 does challenge uh, the center instantly. Um, so it's it's fine. It's interesting. I, I just, to be honest, I, I don't know it as well. Um, castle's here. c takes d4. e takes d4. Knight c6. Okay, this is pretty healthy development for um, for white. Uh, yes. That in this case, you know that that is, um, you know, that's the black Grunfeld that I know is is this more kind of conservative one with c6. Um, but uh, here um, we've got uh, uh, h3 knight b4. Um, interesting. Uh, basically, both sides have pretty good, um, you know, pretty good centers. White's a little bit better in the center. Um, 
uh, but black has this uh, very strong bishop on g7 that's going to be useful in a lot of different plans. Um, here, uh, this is sort of tricky. Uh, let's see. I mean, um, how does you know how does black advance the situation? Uh, knight b4, um, threatening to trade off white's good squared bishop for the knight on c6. Makes sense. Um, uh, followed by d takes c4, bishop takes c4, and then um, knight d5, basically moving the b knight back to d5 to get this strong outpost for it. That makes sense. I understand this plan. Um, and also, uh, bishop f5 could potentially become available for uh, for the um, light squared black bishop. Uh, anyways, um, let's uh, let's um, keep looking at this. Uh, bishop g7, e3, castles. Bishop d3, c5. c5 is really interesting. I mean, c5 is actually much better for um, uh, black's queenside knight development. Uh, that is um, that is definitely true. Uh, you know, basically, um, this this queenside knight uh, is the most important thing, or is the most important benefit, uh, I think, of that uh, that c5 um, over c6 move. Uh, it's a much more natural square for the knight, um, especially if this center is cleared out. Uh, as opposed to uh, d7. Um, interesting. I mean, c5 has its own interesting characteristics, one of them being the ability to develop the knight to c6. Uh, castles, c takes d4, e takes d4, knight c6. And uh, yeah, we're in that position before where uh, black has the better bishop, but white has a slightly better center. Um, let's go back to the game. Uh, here, after c5... Pawn takes c5, knight c6. Good develop. I mean, good development for the knight. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. Um, Llama, thank you very much uh, for the um, the follow. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you very much for joining the stream. Um, so yeah, so knight c6, uh, d takes c4 also works. So like d takes c4, bishop takes c4, queen takes d1, king takes threatening um, this pawn. Uh, this pawn is difficult for white to defend. Um, if, uh, if white plays b4, then um, uh, the knight can play to g4 and double threaten both this knight on, uh, on c3 with... I mean, basically, this knight on c3 is a huge problem. Um, knight on c3 and, uh, and this a1 is vulnerable. Also, this f2 square is vulnerable. Uh, so, so the, yeah, that's interesting. Um, Uh, yes, I, you can usually recover the C pawn. Uh, I would not recover. Yeah, don't worry about the C5 pawn. Um, another thing about the C5 pawn is that um, uh, the uh, yeah no 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 it really is a, it's a good skewer in that in that particular situation. So so there's tactical reasons why it's important. Um, my my reasoning behind that uh, Aphelion, I, I think that's a good point. Really, don't worry about the C pawn. Um, but the uh, the reason why I think not worrying about the C pawn is valuable is because um, you know you have the bishop uh, controlling that long diagonal. So disrupting this structure, uh, this e3, d4 structure here in the Grunfeld, uh, strengthens your bishop on g7. Um, if at any point, uh, you know, that d4 pawn, uh, so, so, you know, looking at the position now, this bishop g7 is facing this pawn on d4. And that's, um, uh, you know, and that's a big, you know, that's a big blockage in the strength of this bishop on g7. Um, instead, instead, basically, if you place, you know, if you place c5, you have more threats on this, um, this d4 pawn. Uh, and if the d4 pawn decides to take the c pawn, then this bishop becomes very strong controlling the long diagonal. So for multiple reasons, the c pawn, uh, you don't have to worry about very much in the Grunfeld. Um, you know, the first thing is you you know if the c pawn gets taken by the d4 pawn, your bishop um, uh, gets this long diagonal in such a way that you're basically getting enough compensation for the missing pawn um, with the bishop alone. Uh, so that's a big piece of this. Um, the next thing about c5, uh, the next thing that's about c5 is that it's relatively easy for um, for black to get it back, either with b and d7. Uh, in which case b4 lets gives that uh, black that huge diagonal and that pin and and uh, and threats on that diagonal. Um, so you know b and d7 here uh, will really effectively threaten the um, the c pawn. 
so yeah, so, so don't worry about the C pun. I think you're completely right about that, Aphelion. Um, but the reason uh, the reason behind that is uh, the strength, you know, taking the C pawn strengthens the bishop on G7, and also it's pretty hard for white to actually hold on to the C5 pawn afterwards um, without doing some very unnatural moves. Uh, so, C pawn gets taken. I wouldn't worry about it. Um, here, it's a tough decision. Uh, it's po so it's post-castling now. So knight c6 is good. I think that's a good development. Um, you know, the engine is basically pushing for c, uh, you know, xc4, in which case you're going to play queen takes d1 on the next move. Um, that's interesting. Uh, you know, it's certainly good if the bishop plays bishop to c4. This this trades off well for for black. So I guess I would say yeah. Um, if uh, if black plays c5, um, then you can take c4. Uh, because the amount of um, basically it's going to be very difficult for uh, for white to hold on to um, the uh, it's going to be very difficult for white to hold on to these pawns. Um, yeah, no, no, that makes sense. I I, under, I understand that logic too, Aphelion. Um, uh, the engine the engine points at trading the queens off is better. Uh, you know, is is objectively best for black. But um, here, I think. Uh, uh, I understand. I definitely understand both logic uh, here. So, so keeping the queens on to attack later, I, I, I that that makes sense to me. You, I mean, you have a reason why you did it. So, I think um, uh, that makes complete sense as a plan. Um, D takes C four, Bishop takes C four, Queen A five, and uh, and yeah, and now you've equalized materially, and Black is better. Um, this this opening was well played. Uh, I don't have any. I, I don't have much in the way of improvements there. Um, the only thing uh, was that the engine was talking about um, pawn takes c4, but uh, but the logic of keeping pieces on so that you um, uh, don't um, you know you know so that you have attacking chances uh, makes sense to me too. Uh, that if you want to play for a win that as black that that makes sense that makes complete sense to me. Um, uh, queen a5 wins back the pawn, and I think uh, yeah no errors here. You know black has effectively equalized. Really good opening play. Um, no, uh, nothing to, uh, yeah, nothing to, to take away. I think this is this is very solid. Everything here made sense to me. Um, uh, queen c2 is going to let that, um, you know, let that queen get chased. Um, so uh, bishop g4 is what the computer is proposing. Um, doubling these f pawns would be pretty disastrous for white. So um, so bishop g4 makes sense uh you know the knight's gonna have to move like doubling f pawns here with the queen out and uh, able to play queen h5 is really bad for white so um so uh you know basically white can't let the um uh white can't let the um bishop take the knight on f3 here uh it's just too it's too weakening for the position um uh knight b4 is fine too um you know knocking the queen to b1 and I think you're almost at the point where you're going to come up with some peace threats. So bishop to g4 is responded to by knight to d4. But anything else, I think, loses the um, uh, I think loses the bishop, right? Um, so knight to a4. Well, knight to a4 gets the tempo. Uh, and knight, yeah, and knight to e4. Um, I guess defends the knight, but that's that's a pretty awkward move. Uh, knight to e4, knight takes e4, queen takes e4. Um, but you haven't really the problem hasn't really been solved. Bishop takes f3. Um, bishop takes b4. Okay, cool. That's that's how that's how white gets out of it. All right. Um, but yeah, uh, you know you're basically um, with knight b1, you're putting a lot of pressure on this uh, this bishop on d2. Um, bishop g4. Threatening to take the knight and then um, leaving the bishop, uh, you know, um, uh, unguarded on d2. Um, white needs to come up with an efficient tactical response to this. Um, knight d3 is interesting. Uh, that looks like a really interesting outpost for black to have. Um, but I, my eyes, I think, are drawn more towards bishop to g4, um, threatening to uh, to take this uh, this d2 uh, bishop. Um, but knight d knight d3 is interesting. Um, cool. Uh, you know, we're mostly kind of in a tactical play here. Um, I'm thinking, uh, you know, there's a few different points of weakness here. Um, first, uh, black can try to aggressively attack on the king side here. So, like, knight g4, queen h5, um, 
Uh, maybe bishop to e5 at some point. Um, there are kingside chances. Uh, the b2 pawn here is also really pretty vulnerable. Um, I'm thinking, uh, you know, in an ideal world you could play a move like knight to e4, um, but there, but uh, but playing that immediately, bishop takes knight, knight takes d2, knight takes b1, but I think you lose a piece in that, so so that's not playable. Um, uh, so you have a few different choices. I'm just trying to uh, to think a little bit about what might be best here. Um, I don't know. I think knight g4 probably. Uh, knight g4 comes up with the most immediate. Basically, it does a few things. Um, first, uh, it allows for a threat on f2. So f2 is getting threatened by knight takes f2, rook takes f2, queen takes f2, and uh, you know, in the other direction, um, uh, bishop takes d3, queen takes d3, rook takes f2, queen takes um, d2. So, so I just want to play. I guess we can just play those through. Um, uh, so say like h3 here, um, knight takes f2, rook takes f2, queen takes f2, clearly wins for black. Um, uh, knight takes f2, bishop takes d3, queen takes d3, um, queen takes d3, and either rook or knight, um, both, uh, both, um, you know, uh, hold on to the material advantage here. Um, yeah, hey house line, how are you? How's it going? Um, but yeah, so so anyways here, um, I think you're in pretty good. I think you're in pretty good shape uh, with uh, black. So so I, I would advance this knight. Um, give it has a few benefits, um, including a threat on f2 and uh, and strengthening um, the pressure on this uh, this dark square diagonal. Um, and the knight on d3 uh, can be effectively defended either through knight takes f2 or through uh, through pro probably knight takes f2 is uh, is the best way to defend that knight on d3. Um, uh, yeah, um, yeah. So let's see. Knight g4, great. Uh, looks good. And uh, yeah, f5, good stuff. I mean, you know, um, here I think I would probably take. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm sort of wondering between pawn takes. Uh, I don't know. Pawn takes e4 versus knight to e5. I, I guess yeah. I guess knight takes knight to e5 um, is probably best. Engine's advocating knight takes e3. Um, that's sort of a... And the, actually, knight takes e3 is objectively the best. Pawn takes, pawn takes. And now uh, and now basically black has won a pawn plus another pawn coming. Um, so yeah, so knight takes e3 is the best move here. But knight e5 is cool too. Um, you're going to win uh, the rook pawn on c3. Um, but yeah, black is, uh, black is winning pretty significantly here. Uh, did it just... Um, uh, yeah... It, was this just a game that um, you know ran out of time, or what was the? Um, uh, it says it ends in a, in a draw here, but it looks like Black's got a pretty big advantage. Um, you know, basically Black's gonna play like Rook takes C3, even Rook C takes C3, which is interesting. Um, uh, on the next move, um, Rook takes C3 looks more natural to me, but they're both they're both playable. Um, and now black's got an advantage, and white has no real attacks going on. So what you know, black is uh, black is ahead by a lot here. Um, gotcha. Yeah. No. No. I mean, I think um, I think probably. Um, yeah. No. No. For sure. For sure. I understand. Uh, yeah. I, I understand. But uh, you know, black was actually way better on the board here. Um, you know, you're you're about to be up a pawn, um, and uh, yeah, I would just. Um, for sure. No, no, that makes sense. That makes sense, Aphelion. Um, you played a you played a good game. Uh, I but that's an interesting uh that's an interesting solution. You know, I guess I would say um, uh, H six here probably, but um, but you're about to win material, and uh, you know, given that you're about to be winning, um, you know, it, uh, it's a tough situation. I mean, you know, managing time pressure, and it sounds like there were some like tournament related um, situational things. Uh, but you can win this game. Um, this game, uh, this game should be winnable under reasonable, you know, reasonably normal circumstances. Uh, you know, this uh, this pawn's not gonna, um, you know, this pawn's gonna fall. Um, you're gonna have, uh, you know, your rooks are significantly better. Like, look how much into the position uh, the rooks are relative to uh, to the um, the white pawn. 
Yeah, no, no, I, I, I get. I mean, definitely makes sense. These things can definitely happen. Um, but the, if you had, if you have, um, like, I wouldn't want to play indefinitely with on time delay in this position. But depending on how much time you had, um, uh, that was, you know, basically this is a game that you, you've won on the board. There's not really many even things to take away from it, to be honest. I mean, it was a pretty well-played game. Um, in terms of uh, strategy here, the one, um, the one thing I probably would have changed here was the threats on, uh, on um, d2. Uh, here, I think bishop g4 is pretty clearly like... Uh, uh, it, bishop g4 is a, a very pressuring move on the bishop on d2. Um, the knight goes to d4, uh, and you play like e5, but the defense on d2 is, uh, is really, um, uh, you know, not that good. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I, think that's, I think that's a tactical improvement here. Um, this, uh, this bishop g4 exerts a lot more pressure on, uh, on black, or sorry, on white. Um, the bishop is, uh, is loose here, uh, so, um... Uh, and also you have the fact that bishop takes f3 is definitely very good for black. Um, so, uh, so white needs to come up with complicated tactical solution um, after you play bishop to g4. Um, that's sort of my one improvement for this game. I think this opening was played really well. You've equalized uh, out of the Grunfeld as black. Um, but, uh, but the improvement that I would offer here is, uh, is that, um, that uh, move um, uh, bishop to g4. Um, threatening that bishop to, that bishop on d2. Anyways, uh, we spent some time on this game. Uh, let's uh, let's get on to the next one. Sorry to uh, sorry to to uh, to get a little bit behind here, but I uh, I thought that was an interesting game, and I wanted to answer your your guys' questions about training. Um, uh, yeah, no, no, thank you very much uh, for sending the game, Aphelion. And uh, yeah, no, please keep sending them. They're all super interesting. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, no, thanks uh, thanks for the game. Um, okay, here we have a uh, king's Indian defense against uh, the four pawns attack. Um, this is really interesting. Uh, this is um, cool. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for sending it, Hyperion. Um, super interesting situation. Uh, so um, this is a difficult situation for uh, for Black, but with a well timed pawn breaks here, um, Black's going to get some really uh, good uh, you know compensation. Um, uh, yeah, no worries. No, I, I mean, basically, um, uh, castles is interesting. Um, uh, you know, basically, in a flank flank opening versus big center opening game, um, you know, you're looking at a situation where white gets a spatial advantage um, and a center advantage, and you're trying to come up with the right situation to, um, to disrupt it. Uh, white runs the risk of becoming overextended, um, this sort of looks, you know, it has some characteristics that are similar to like the Alakine's defense um, or those types of hypermodern defenses where, um, uh, you know, uh, black is playing for a misstep by white or an overextension by white. Um, F4, castles, E5, and, uh, and basically white is putting a lot of pressure on black, but at the same time, the eval is not really shifting towards white. As these pawns are advancing, they're becoming more vulnerable to attack. Uh, you know, they're becoming very easily within range of Black's pieces uh, for attack. Um, so White needs to be careful to make sure that he doesn't overextend. A move like uh, yeah, so so like here, you know, you've already got a good move. Um, either D takes E5 or C5. I like D takes E5 here because it fractures the pawns almost immediately. Um, D takes E5 is not really that great, and it gives you a um, an open file for your queen. Uh, now you can go like knight c6, uh, bishop to e6 maybe, because this pawn is loose on c4. Uh, normally e6 isn't a great place to develop the bishop, but here you have some attacking chances with it. Um, here, uh, you know, white has white is overextending his pawn structure. Um, you've basically gotten that break, and uh, and that's good for you. Um, here black hangs a pawn, it looks like. Um, I think d takes e5, and you're just, you win the pawn. Uh, bishop e takes e5 looks playable to me. Um, you know, white will probably play something along the lines of, like, bishop to h6, h but black has won a center pawn. So, you know, this, this, you know, this pawn structure became almost immediately too big for white to effectively defend. Uh, interesting. Interesting problem. 
Um, but yeah, this is what, you know, this is a good situation for blackout of a flank versus a uh, big center opening. Um, you know, uh, white has overextended and uh, black is in good shape, you know, black is in good shape. Um, knight takes, rook takes. And here, you know, basically, um, uh, I don't know. Um, it looks like it's about, you know, the, the engine is saying equality. White has attacking initiative, um, but black has better pieces. So if black can trade off a piece here, black's going to be in way better shape. Um, but that's, you know, that's easier said than done. Like, black needs a tactical maneuver to basically get pieces off the board here. Um, H5 uh, is not a good good move, but... Um, yeah. Yeah, no, no, this this uh, this game, unfortunately, I, I think you've got a good position. I'll show you, you know, basically here you've done a good job. Uh, you've won an exchange and you're, um, you know, and you're up material. Uh, you will need to defend against an aggressive black attack. Uh, so knight takes here, um, uh, rook takes. Interesting, g4 was better there. Uh, but okay, so... Uh, so this is kind of this was kind of rough. Um, uh, hmm. I'm wondering if there's any way to steer away from this, but either way, it looks like um, uh, Black's king side is going to get opened here. Um, I wonder if there is a way to sort of steer around this. Um, maybe. Hmm. Uh, there's a tactical win here. Oh, here it is. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, so so here White um, made a tactical misplay. Um, this this attack was solid. This you know this um, situation was fine. You know Black's or White's best chances are going to be to sacrifice his rook for this knight. Um, but at this point, the Black side still holds uh, holds pretty solid. Um, knight takes e4 is an error. Uh, there's a few different ways that um, that black can play this, but the way uh, that the engine suggests is bishop takes b2. Yeah, no, 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 totally. Um, it's a, it's just a tactical thing. Um, so on bishop takes b2, queen takes b2, and then this e4 knight is hanging. Uh, there, there were a few other ways that white could have played through that tactic, but now knight takes e4, and uh, and you know, or sorry, or, or knight takes e4, or bishop takes e4 is objectively better. Uh, but either way, um, you're getting that knight on e4. Uh, so yeah, so it was basically, um, uh, you know, a peace-winning um, uh, blunder by white. Uh, so, so basically, no problems, solid defense by black up until this point. Then white hangs a piece um, to this tactic. Bishop takes b2, queen takes b2, and then either way, take the knight, but um, bishop takes is, is somewhat better. Uh, so here, you know, Black's basically got a good edge, ha is a piece up, and, and is, uh, you know, on the verge of winning. Um, uh, here, this, you know, this basically is, um, yeah, this is, this is somewhat unfortunate. But um, I think here, basically, the uh, knight goes to d6, knight takes f5, um, I'm just thinking, because f6 does weaken, uh, yeah, yeah, so that tactic, that was your opportunity, um, everything else, it appears, uh, uh, leads to a bad, um, a bad situation for black, uh, you know, the best move versus second best move here is seven, and those are situations that you need to see, uh, it's just, it's too much, you know, it's too much to be giving away with the incorrect tactical move. So, tactics as as always. Um, uh, so so this this I mean this game basically came down to it. You know, like many games came came down to a tactical situation. Uh, bishop takes b two, and black is up by almost six. Anything else, and um, uh, white is up by one. I mean that's it's just it's it, there's too much being left on the table from a tactical perspective. Um, that's why tactical study is so important. Um, yeah, no, no, no. I understand Hyperion. I mean, we all miss we all miss moves like this um, from time to time. Uh, but with tactical study, you will miss fewer and fewer of them. Um, 
it's just too much though like you know seven points is a is a decision in most you know in almost every game you know it's basically if the difference between move one and move two is seven you pretty much must see it or you're um going to have a worse outcome than um uh you know than you otherwise will um you know nobody sees it all the time uh, but this is very demonstrative of the fact that uh, the tactics, you know, really need to be seen and tactical study needs to be to be done. Um, there, there was a correct move here. You know, th this is a puzzle, right? I mean, you know, this is a puzzle on the board, and um, you know, if you've done your uh, if you've done your puzzle homework, you know, you have a much better chance of seeing it. But you could literally hand this in as a puzzle on uh, hand the situation as a puzzle into chess.com. And it would be, you know, a worthy one uh, for like their their tactics trainer. Um, it's just, you know, there's a solution here. Uh, uh, yeah, the knight on e4. Um, yeah, no, but I mean, you know, I I under I I understand uh, for sure uh, for sure, um, Andy. Uh, but um, it's just you know there's there's literally a solution to this one. It's bishop takes b2, and if you play bishop takes b2, then you um, you know then you win a piece and you win. Um, and if you don't, uh, then white is you know still aggressively attacking you. Um, it's it's a win. Uh, uh, this is a you know this is a puzzle, and uh, you want to have done as many puzzles as you possibly can so that when this comes up in a game. Um, you uh, you know come to the correct solution. It's uh, you know it's it's not easy. It's not easy, but the solution is is simple. Uh, if you see puzzles like this, your um, uh, you know your vision for puzzles in, in situations like this will improve. Uh, this could easily this position could just it could easily be in uh, in um, puzzle battle, uh, and. Uh, if you've done enough puzzle battle, you'll see this over the board and win the game. Um, just, I there's 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 one move, and uh, so it's you know like a like it's like a test question or something. Um, anyways, uh, black um, you know black basically plays this, and uh, and even now um, you know the pressure's on um, black uh, with this attack, but um, but he sort of misplays it as well. And then um, uh, you know the situation's close to equality. Um, Black has better uh, material, um, and if he can trade one of the uh, if he can trade one of the pieces off, like trade rooks or trade queens, he'll be way up here. Um, but there's uh, there's initiative for uh, for um, white. Uh, and then this you know this was definitely an idea, um, like rook takes g3, but um, but it's. Uh, yeah, this just wasn't, uh, it didn't, um, it, it just wasn't the correct tactical maneuver. Uh, but here, just from a fundamental perspective, I think it's more important to explain the fundamentals, is just, um, you know, you're basically going into a situation where white's advantage, it's, it's almost completely equal according to the eval, um, and white's advantage is he has more initiative. Um, black has material, white has initiative. So if you trade off a piece, you're in good shape. Um. Uh. Yeah. No. No. I think that's right, and I think that happens a lot. That's the need for first. Um. You know, tactical study. Uh. But the main. Um. Uh. The main idea here is. Um. Get. Uh. You know. Get one of the pieces off the board. Um. Is is priority number one. If you can get either the queens traded or the rooks traded, your material. The the attack will be over, and your material. Um. Advantage will win. Uh, so this sort of demonstrates the point. Um, if you're getting attacked, trade off pieces because that will um, slow, you know, that will slow or end the attack. Um, that is definitely true in this case. Um, if you can trade off rooks or queens here, uh, white will no longer have enough pieces to uh, attack you effectively with. Um, so that's an idea. Uh, the rook takes g3 breakthrough here um, is definitely an idea. Um, and h5, I, I, you know, here I would play. Uh, rook to g5 first, I think. Uh, rook to g5, then h5, then h4. Um, I think that's the, the correct execution. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the, but uh, in this situation, conceptually, 
trading off pieces will end the attack and win for black. Um, so, uh, yeah, this this uh, tactic unfortunately did not work out. Um, there was actually a mate here, which is sort of impressive. Uh, let's just play it out to the end. King e2, rook g2, king d3. And, uh, and here, basically, you know, um, black was in good shape and about to win. Uh, so, yeah, tactical vision. Um, you had a mate in eight. No, no, you had a mate in eight here. Um, you, uh, uh, queen g1 was the maneuver. Um, uh, so pawn took, which was an error. Queen takes, king, uh, king f1. And then you have a mate in eight that, um, uh, you play queen g1 and then uh, basically control both the first and second ranks with your queen and rook and, uh, and um, have a mate here. Uh, so again, a tactical puzzle, right? Like this is a mate in six, or I mean here, uh, pawn takes, queen takes, and this is a mate in eight uh, for black. Um, and uh, with, with tactics training, you will see this. Um, there's a fundamental tactical concept, I think just uh, queen to g1 and rook to g2, which controls the first and um, second ranks and just sort of displaces the king. Like, even if you don't see the tactic all the way through, that general concept uh, should demonstrate that, um, uh, that that's, the way to, that's the way to win. Uh, if you can get the king to the third rank, your chances of winning with that attack are very high. Um, uh, so that's, you know, th this is ju it's just tactic, uh, tactical vision. Um, but, uh, but basically two puzzles here. Um, you have this position and it's made Nate. Uh, a puzzle exists that's very similar to this. And, uh, and if you've done that puzzle, your chances of seeing this in an over the board situation are much higher. Uh, that's just, you know, that's just the case in, in, um, this situation. Uh, so yeah, so, so, um, black had a number of, of chances here. Um, and, uh, with tactical study, which is something that, you know, I'm, anyone can do and anyone can improve significantly with. Um, uh, black would have uh, black would have won this game at two different points. Um, uh, the um, you know the first one being this uh, you know this possibility to get to uh, plus five um, plus five here. Uh, yeah, no, 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 for sure, no, no. It's I mean, no, I, you played a good game. You had many you had many opportunities. Um, uh, and you know if you do your tactics six months from now, you will. Con convert on these opportunities. The first of this opportunity put you ahead by six points. That should be a decisive win. Uh, bishop takes b2 the, is the correct move in this tactical puzzle. Puts you ahead by six and you'll win. Um, the second one, uh, you have a, um, a mate and eight here. Uh, the, the eval gives mate and eight. If you can see the mate and eight, you win. I, you know, you six months from now, if you do um, sufficient tactical study, you could be in the exact situation in this game and win twice. I mean, it's it's really pretty straightforward. Like it, this is just another tactical. This this could easily be a tactical puzzle. Um, and if you've done the tactical puzzle that corresponds to this type of position, um, you will see that solution and you will win this game. It's it's you know, it's not simple, but it's it's that. It, that's that is the case, uh, and it's not, and unfortunately it's not something that you know I, I can help much with. That you know th these types of tactical studies you have to do on your own. Um, you have to do that homework and put in the time there. But um, but it would have won this game for you in two different situations, and it, I guarantee it's something that you can do and do correctly. Like it's the six months from now, this will be um, you know if if you follow a good tactical training regimen, this this will be a win for you. Uh, I mean. You know, I guess my first thing is you, you can see that it's the solution with queen queen g1 and then rook g2 and it knocks the king up to the third rank and that's that's probably a win. But you will be able to even calculate it into the end of uh, of the tactical solution. Um, the mate and eight was on the board, but um, uh, it did not get converted at this time. But it will get converted by you at some point in the future. Um, that's uh, that's the that's my take on that game. Uh, Otherwise, well played. I mean, you know, it's a really interesting game and uh, uh, just two uh, two tactical uh, uh, things. Yeah, no, no, no. I think I think you had no, you had it. I mean, um, it's just you haven't done the puzzle that looks like that yet. 
If you do the puzzle that looks like that three times, you'll have that position burned into your brain and you'll get it right in both of those situations. It's, um, you know, it doesn't, it's not, it's not overnight, but you will see a puzzle that looks like that and your brain will recognize it the next time. Um, okay, cool. Uh, one Diverto, uh, his game is next. Um, and let's take a look. Uh... Okay, um, one Diverto is playing this game as black, uh, so let's take it from his perspective. Um, yeah, no, 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 thanks, thanks, guys. No, thank you very much for sending the game, one Diverto. Um, please keep sending them. No, I really appreciate it, and uh, thank you very much for joining the stream and for contributing to it. I uh, really, yeah, it's super great to have uh, have games from everybody. And uh, yeah, no, thanks, Hyperion. Um, uh, thank you for thank you all very much for being here and for sending the games and uh, yeah no it makes it so much better when uh, you guys all send stuff and, and provide suggestions for material like makes this run super well and uh, and I hope it's helpful because it's definitely fun for me and uh, and I really like uh, I really like getting to to kind of um, you know review these concepts and look at these games and, and learn I learn a lot from this so uh, so thanks all for participating and for contributing uh, material for the stream. Um, but yeah, sorry to uh, sorry to um, keep you waiting, Diverto. Uh, here's uh, so this is basically um, a Scotch game. So Scotch game is defined with d4, pawn takes d4, uh, and uh, uh, White plays bishop to c4. So the line that I play against this is bishop to c5. Um, bishop to b4, I don't know, but bishop to um, c5 and knight f6 are going to be like the most popular moves here. Um, knight f6 is getting evaluated as best by the engine. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this situation for, for black. Um, d5, I guess, is the response, and knight e4. Um, but uh, I felt like this situation with this pawn on e5 um, can feel pretty um, restrictive to black's development. So, uh, you know, now that I look at it and I see the, the engine analysis, um, I recognize that... Um, uh, I recognize that uh, bishop or knight to f6 is better than bishop to c5, um, but I've always played bishop to c5, so that's the line that I know. Um, this makes me more tempted to looking at the uh, the engine analysis here makes me more tempted to play uh, knight f6 here. Um, anyways, uh, bishop to b4 is played, and uh, bishop to b4 is interesting because it um, it solidifies the uh, the win of the pawn here. Um, but now, as a result, black will have to play accurate defense. Um, moves like uh, bishop to a4 um, or queen to d4 uh, can be dangerous. Um, and the engine's giving a single uh, a single line uh, with black having the edge, bishop to a5. Um, here, castles, bishop to b6 probably, or d6. I guess I like d6 more. Um, d6, queen to b3. Queen to e7, I think, um, and overall, uh, I think you know basically Black's uh, you know under attack, but should be able to hold this together. Queen f6, I guess. Um, queen e7 or Queen f6 are both in the opening book, um, but basically the point is uh, with Bishop to b4, um, Black is getting a um, a material uh, gain, but is going to be attacked. Uh, knight g5 is interesting. Um, I would be tempted to play knight to a6 here or knight to h6 here um this is sort of looking a little bit like the fried liver uh which uh is an opening that uh, I, we've gone over i think once or twice but um uh here this is tricky uh the the opening book only has knight e5 i prefer knight h6 and the engine actually looks at knight h6 with knight h6 this f7 pawn is covered pretty well um, you know, this, uh, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, king takes, and either queen to d5 or queen to b3, or uh, queen to d5 or queen to f3, and, and, uh, and black is winning by a lot. So knight to h6 develops the knight, puts it in a slightly better position, and prevents any aggressive, uh, sacrifices on f7. Uh, they wouldn't be, uh, they, the sacrifices on f7 wouldn't work here. 
Um, queen f6 or queen e7, I guess, are probably the best. Um, castles, maybe. Um, but overall, this is, uh, this is a bit tricky. Uh, so I'd say, yeah, I'd say castles. Um, maybe, I, nah, probably queen f6. Queen f6 seems safer than castling to me. Castling is very committal. Uh, castling basically means that, um, you know, you, you will definitely need to calculate, I mean, either way you're going to need to accurately calculate this, um, this, uh, white kingside attack. Um, but castling sort of restricts your pieces, um, from being able to defend the king as effectively. Uh, if the king's in the middle, it still has escape squares. Um, if it, you castle, it really doesn't have, um, any, uh, any reasonable escape squares. Um... But those are the options. Uh, you need more defensive force on f7, either by castling with the rook or by the queen moving the queen. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. No, no. I mean, and it is. Um, uh, it. I. I think. Um, uh, so. So castle and then um, uh, knight. Yeah. So castle knight f3, um, and then uh, you know it's up to you, sort of what you want to do to defend this h6 knight. Um, I'd probably play queen f6 here. Uh, queen f6, you know, basically, um, bishop takes h6, uh, it's definitely bad for your pawn structure. Like, there's no question about that. Um, but, uh, in terms of, um, surviving the attack from white, uh, I, um, I think, you know, knight, I think bishop takes h6, pawn takes h6, is bad if the queen is still on the board. But there's a big difference between, um, uh, so say in this situation, um, bishop takes h6, uh, or say, yeah, say like black plays like d6 or something. Bishop takes h6, pawn takes h6, and this is bad. The, the queen is really, um, uh, you know, the queen can immediately play h6, and, uh, and the black king side is uh, completely open. Um, that's for sure. Uh, this is, um, yeah, this is a problem. Um, but on the other side, um, you know, if, uh, if, um, uh, black plays, uh, sorry, knight h6, queen h5, and then, um, uh, d6, and then knight f3, and then, like, um, queen e7, or queen f6. Uh, here, if the, uh, pawns have traded off on h6, um, this, uh, you know, this formation, and that wasn't actually the right, the right transposition, but this formation is a lot safer for black. So here, um, castles, knight f3, queen f6, bishop takes h6, queen takes h6, queen takes, pawn takes. This is still bad for black in a pawn structure perspective, but it's good for black in terms of getting rid of this, um, uh, uh, you know, getting rid of the attack. So I think bishop takes is h6 is okay as long as the queen takes um, and not the pawn. Uh, if the queen takes and then the pawn takes, that's fine. Um, you know, this this attack for white is not going to have enough pieces to really be super dangerous. Um, but uh, but if it's yeah, I mean basically the double pawns on the rook are terrible if um, the king is castled and the queen's then the white queen is still on the board. But if the um, if the uh, the uh, queens are traded off. Um, it's still not good from a, a structural perspective, but it's good from a um, uh, it's good from just a, a simplification perspective here. Uh, you know, now black actually, you know, remember black is up a pawn here, um, uncompensated. So uh, you know, just just eliminating the attack uh, makes that gambited pawn for white uh, not worth it. Um, if, if black can eliminate the attack, um, then black will just be a piece up, or uh, sorry, a pawn up. Um, so yeah, so, so, so knight f3 is, um, you know, an idea, uh, but it's sort of refuted by queen f6. Um, I think, but I think castling is still not the correct move immediately. I think queen f6 is the, the correct move immediately. Um, castles, d6, queen f3, queen takes, knight takes, bishop g4, and, uh, and here c6, uh, this is just fine for black. Um, you know, this game is, is fine for black. Um, you know, um, in order to, to get this quick kingside attack, white sacrificed a pawn, and if the, uh, queens get traded off correctly, and, uh, and the attacks basically end, um, and, uh, and black is fine and up material. From here, this should be a pretty, you know, 
I don't want, I don't know if it's an easy win, but um, this this is definitely good for Black and and getting closer and closer to winning. Um. Uh, on somehow this trade. Okay, so this traded into an opposite colored bishop endgame. Um, that is not ideal. Uh, you know, I, I guess I would say um, this. Uh, yeah, uh, for sure. Um, makes sense. Uh, rook takes bishop c2, f6, rook h3. Um, uh, yeah, so I would definitely. I, I'm wondering if there's a way to do this. Um, without trading into a bishop, an opposite color bishop endgame. Um, you're already sort of getting closer and closer to that risk as this material leaves the board, right? Um, uh, bishop to b6, king f1 is correct. Um, trading off the knight for the bishop is a good idea. Uh, knight c5, d5. All of this looks fine. Um... Yeah, the engine sees knight b3 and realizes that we're going into an opposite colored bishop endgame, and it becomes much closer to equality. Um, Black has much less, uh, you know, maneuver, you know, uh, ability to maneuver out of an opposite colored bishop endgame. Um, here, uh, I don't know. Um, I, w I guess I would just say avoid trades in general here. Um, you know, you're up a piece, but um, uh, yeah, let's look at f6. Um, no, I think f6 has some utility. Like, f6 basically keeps f white from playing f6, and that's fine. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's figure that out. It's a good question. Um, this position is not... I mean, you know, this is a tough position for black, actually. Um, I'm wondering if uh, bishop to c3 should be played. Uh, okay, so you know you're up. A, so first, you're up a pawn is black, um, so that's good. Uh, the second thing is, um, you know, your h pawns are not as strong as regular pawns. Um, you know, trading any trading one of your h pawns for any other pawn on the board is a big win in that trade for you. Um, so here, what I would do, I think, is probably, um, I, I think, uh. You know, either bishop to c7. If you can even trade one of your doubled h pawns for one of white's doubled um, uh, f pawns, um, that's good for you. Uh, so, in terms of moving this forward, I think basically, um, you know, on bishop to f6, black should uh, be ready to play knight d7 and knight takes f6. Uh, you know, f6 looks dangerous because it wins the h7 pawn. But it doesn't. Um, but it isn't actually that great to trade this f5 pawn for this h7 pawn. Uh, that's actually a trade that's good for you. So, like, say here, um, bishop c7, f6, knight d7, bishop takes h7, knight takes f6. This is actually good for black. Um, that h pawn, you know, those h pawns were worth very little, and uh, the f pawns weren't great either, but they were worth more than the h pawns. Um, yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, but the thing is, it doesn't really, um, uh, you know, it's not really that valuable. The h7 pawn is not super valuable. Uh, it's basically just, um, uh, you know, not um, going to, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's worth trading for any other pawn, including the pawn on f5. Um, so letting this actually happen, um, I don't think is, is bad for black at any real point. Uh, this this whole trading um, maneuver is uh, is good for black. Um, I think emphasis. So 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 two things on this end game. Um, I think uh, keeping the keeping it from um, going into a uh, an opposite colored bishop end game it should be a relatively high priority for black who's winning. Um, might not be possible, but it's a it's a priority. Um, uh, and then. Um, I would worry less about losing these rook pawns, uh, or losing one of these rook pawns. Losing one of these rook pawns is not that bad. Uh, trading basically either h7 or h6 for any other pawn is a win. Uh, you know, is a win for for um, for black. 
you know, if uh, if black plays bishop c7 and um, the rook plays h3, I guess that doesn't really even trade off pawns. It just loses the f4 pawn. But if if you if the situation comes trading h6 for um, for f4, that's good for black. If the situation comes to trading h7 for f5, that's also good for black. So um, so you know, in the end of that, uh, trading you know one a doubled rook pawn is worth very little. Um, so I would not be too worried about losing one of them. Losing both of them could become more complicated. Uh, losing both of them, um, you know, and, and white basically has a passed pawn. So that's probably something that you would feel more strongly about avoiding. But in terms of uh, worrying about f6 and then this threat on... Uh, uh, I understand the point of... Uh, I, I mean, I understand the point of not wanting to lose the h7 pawn. Um, but I think... Uh, I think you want to, um, you know, not be too optimistic about the the value of, of both of them. Um, doubled rook pawns are very weak, uh, you know, in general. Like doubled rook pawns are, are worth, doubled rook pawns are not worth more than one pawn. You know, not worth much more than one pawn. They're probably worth 1.2 pawns or something. Uh, so so losing one of them is, uh, you know, only only a 0.2 loss to you or something like that. I mean, it's 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 not much. Um, and it's a great trade if you can trade a, a pawn worth 0.2 for a pawn worth 1 or a pawn worth 0.7 or 8 or whatever. Um, that's, a, that's always going to be a good trade. Uh, so yeah, so I would worry less about um, uh, this tactic given the idea that this tactic requires f6, which makes the f pawns more vulnerable um, in order to uh, attack your h7 pawn. Um, but yeah, let's keep going. Uh, rook, okay, rook e3. I mean, you know, this uh, this is getting dangerous. Uh, th that a pawn is is advancing quickly. Um, uh, darn. Okay, cool. Yeah, I see. No, I, I see what happened. Um, uh, interesting. Um, so yeah, let's let's slow down uh, for just a bit here. Uh, but um, you basically le you basically get towards equality. I, I would keep the knights on. I, first, the th thing is uh, is definitely keeping the knights on is um, you know good for Black's winning chances. Uh, rook h3, um, bishop a5. I think I think bishop a5 is really just a, kind of a blunder here. Um, bishop a5 turns it into a, an opposite colored bishop endgame. Like I, I would consider um, you know a rook and opposite colored bishop endgame to definitely be closer to a uh, an opposite colored bishop endgame than. Um, a rook and two minor piece endgame. Uh, this, um, uh, yeah. No, no, I think that's right. Um, I think that's right, Diverto. Uh, I think that's the, um, uh, the, um, the idea. Uh, I think, I think basically bishop a5 forces off a minor piece and, and black wants to keep on the minor pieces here, uh, just to avoid that opposite colored bishop endgame. Um, so I think that was an error. Uh, uh, here, you know, black still probably has equal chances, but it's risky. Um, it's dangerous, and uh, and this rook's about to take that um, that h6 pawn. Uh, black's probably not better here. Um, you know, I, tactical maneuvers are probably like rook e7, bishop or rook f7 or something like that. But um, I, I don't I don't think black is very clearly winning after it goes from two minor pieces to one. And, uh, and opposite colored bishops. Um, uh, this end game, you know, black puts up a fight in this end game for sure to uh, to try to um, uh, keep it, you know, to try to win it or, or draw it. But uh, but I think things have already moved pretty significantly against black at this point. Um, the place to split this off, um, I think basically black is in good shape here with the minor pieces on the board. Um, I'm not sure I would have even traded off these rooks. Uh, I get trading off these rooks because they do end up giving you this um, this open file for your rook. So that one's actually probably okay. I, I might not have wanted to do it, but um, I guess two rooks is more drawish than one rook anyways. That that one's unclear to me. Uh, maybe, maybe the rook trade is fine. I, I think the rook trade's probably close to fine. This um, tactic, I think, was overvalued. Uh, F6, I think, um, I think basically the, the fundamentals on this are, um, you know, keep moving your minor pieces, but don't spend any time worrying about this threat. Um, this threat trades an H-pawn for an F-pawn, and that's a win for you. 
Uh, so I, I would just kind of move your pieces in a natural developing way um, uh, in this situation. And then, you know, potentially wait for f6 and play knight to d7 as a response. Um, uh, f6 with the bishop taking h7 is not something to worry about. And then I think the really kind of biggest error here um, was, uh, was in trading off your, um, uh, your knight to b3 here. Um, I, think that, uh, I think that was a big mistake. Um, uh, you know, a very makeable mistake, but like um, heading in, you know, trading off minor pieces to get into a bishop or to get into a rook in opposite color bishop endgame um, really increases the chances that you're going to draw. Uh, so, um, so I wouldn't, uh, I, I think that was, that was an error. Um, I think avoiding that, uh, that would have been a good idea. So like, you know, as opposed to threatening the c3 pawn, um, threaten the, uh, the f4 pawn and, uh, and you're in good shape or, or in much better shape. Um, so say, you know, bishop to c7 and, uh, you're still up 1.2 on the eval and, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, like we can take a look at, uh, yeah, sure. Well, we can spend a second on that. Um, uh, move 18, um, uh, I think this opens up, it basically unnecessarily opens up a line of attack on, uh, on, um, the white, uh, king. Um, I think, uh, tactics along the lines of bishop to b6, king to h1, and then, like, knight to g3 or knight to d4, um, really make this king very restricted in the, uh, in the king side. So, like, er, you know, g3, knight f2, king g2, and, like, knight to g4, I guess. Um, something like that. Uh, e3 is a big attacking square, but basically um, f4 allows way stronger um, uh, maneuvering of black into white's king side. Uh, that's why it's that's why it's a problem. Um, uh, yeah, I'll take a look. Um, but yeah, I would say uh, this um, this f4 uh, allows black in. Um, uh... Yeah, no, no. So king d3. Uh, do you mean sorry, knight d3? Uh, so f4, bishop b6, king h1, knight to d3. Looks fine to I mean, this this engine seems all right with it. Um, I think the whole, I mean, my, my whole idea is that the fundamental, you know, fundamentally letting the, the black, oh, knight to d3 immediately. Uh, yeah, just because, um, uh, you know, rook f3 potentially allows you to play king e1 as a response. But overall, um, this uh, this kingside attack gets um, uh, you know this kingside attack gets weaker the the more moves that you allow. So something like h3 or g3 here, uh, I think are uh, better for white. So let's see, like g3, um, d5. I mean, it's still it's still good. You know, it, this is still good for black. Uh, why did the, why did the eval shift there? Uh, it's a good question. Um, yep. Uh, hmm. uh, it's this, it's this line. I mean, it's this line where the king is not restricted. Uh, having the king restricted in the corner and having the bishop attack it is, uh, is the, um, uh, you know, is the reasoning why, um, why knight d3 didn't, you know, why it preferred bishop d b6, which immediately causes, uh, uh, king to go to h1 is better than, is better for black than, uh, than a line where the king gets to escape to f1 instead. Um, rook f3, uh, and say bishop to b6, and then, like, king h1. Um, this, uh, this leads to, um, uh, the, you know, the, uh, an even more favorable eval for black. Uh, it's, yeah, it's the escape square king h1 versus king f1. Um, and in fact, let's look at, like, um, you know, let's look at, like, knight, so knight d3, and then anything but f, rook f3. So say, you know, knight d2, um, or actually that hangs upon, so that's, that's not good. But bishop to b3, um, here it's bishop to b6. And you wind up with, and King King uses H1 as an escape square. You wind up as with almost exactly the same eval as uh, as if you had played Bishop to B6 first. Um, it's because uh, Bishop to B6 is forcing the King to go to H1, and uh, and um, uh, Knight D3 allows White to have the tempo to not have to escape to that square. 
uh, he can play um, he can play bishop b6 and then king f1 instead. Um, that that's uh, that's the logic of the engine there. Um, really good question though. Yeah, feel free to everybody just like keep the questions coming. Like, uh, you know, I'll give my best answer. Uh, but but I'm pretty sure I'm right on that one. Uh, that I, that I think that's the explanation for the eval diff. Uh, cool. Um, two more games. Thank you all very much for uh, for um, uh, sticking by. We're going a little bit over time today. I, I sort of spent some time on uh, some extra time on some things. Um, but uh, but let's look at this. Um, cool. So this is uh, this is a game um, sent by uh, by um, Emmett, who's playing white. Um, and uh, here, bishop to c4. Um, yeah, no, no, thank you very much for sending the game one, Deverto. I really hope to see you again, and uh, thank you very much for joining the stream. Um, it's super helpful to have all you guys send uh, send games in. And uh, yeah, we're in the bonus. Uh, but um, but yeah, no, it's really helpful for you guys to send games in, and uh, I really appreciate the uh, yeah you know I appreciate you guys contributing material to the stream. Um, it makes things much more interesting, and uh, and it really helps. So um, yeah, so uh, so bishop c4, e6, d3, bishop g7, knight f3, uh, knight e7, bishop g5. Okay, um, you know not a good eval. You know not the best eval for uh, for black here. Um, but uh, but basically, um, pretty good central control for white. Um, I, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that the eval is so favorable to black here. Uh, yeah. Um, were you playing? You were playing as white though, right? Uh, yeah. This is a very um, passive opening for black. Uh, you know, it will have to go with the standard. Um, you know, you have to go with the standard concepts of um, making sure that uh, uh, um, white doesn't overextend. But um, uh, but here, you know, I basically think um, White's got a pretty solid position. Uh, some weird stuff going on with the eval, but this this feels good for White. I, I can't imagine that this is uh, this is better for Black. Um, big spatial advantage, good development, center control. Uh, y you know, it's um, it's the standard situation with a flank opening where um, uh, yeah, no, no, and I think that's the right way to play. Um, uh, that's the right way to play it, uh, 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 Emmett. I think um, basically, if you keep with this, um, uh, you know, if you keep with this uh, general plan, um, you know, and and don't overextend. I would say the biggest overextension with white against flank openings is the pawns. Um, but if you're just developing in a healthy way, uh, this is good for white. I I don't understand any eval difference from that. Like, I've got your pieces out. Black, you know, might have some ideas with d5 potentially, but overall, uh, I think you're in pretty good shape. Um, bishop b3, um, yeah, sure. Um, but white white has a very natural and easy to play position here. Um, the engine is uh, is pushing for uh, for bishop to h6 early. Um, I no, I really like white's position here actually. Um, you know, I think you have a very good strategic setup for uh, for the attack. Um, <laughs> that's cool. That's awesome, Hyperion. I didn't even know you could do that. That's really cool. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna show that to Jen. She'll like that. That's really cool. Uh, but yeah, so um, uh, here I would say H4. Um, H4 and uh, and White is really gonna start to have an aggressive attack. Uh, you haven't made the real air, you know, you're up 1.2 pawns, you have the initiative, there's no real um, bad problems coming with, uh, uh, you know, with any, you haven't overextended, um, White's in it, White has a very good position here. Uh, something like, you know, bishop b3 could be played to head off d5, but I like h4. Um, h4, h5, rook h2 maybe, uh, rook h1, pawn takes g6. Um, this uh, you have a very well-made kind of um, good strategic plan here. Uh, very, um, you know, you're, you're going to get a very aggressive attack going uh, and and be in good shape. Um, uh, and then on, and then yeah, so so um, uh, this was not the uh, so so I think there's an opportunity for improvement with this strategic idea. Um, basically, uh, knight play so so. Um, here, I would not worry about the center. Uh, this uh, king side is where you should be focusing your energy. Um, the bishops lined up the, with the queen. Bishops to h6 can be played, and the pawns can start storming on the king side. That's the correct way to uh, to win this game. 
Um, this looks really good for white. Uh, I would say like h4, um, maybe f6, bishop to f4, and uh, you know h h5 coming like e5 maybe. But um, but uh, but it's but here I would assemble the correct strategic plan. Um, especially with your king castled queen side, uh, the place to go against um, black in a flank opening is right for the king side. Um, you have more pieces, uh, and your pieces are pointing towards the king. Uh, this is over here, this is over here, this is over here, and the pawns are available, and the rooks are available to line up on h1 and g1. Um, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, no, I think, I think if you do that, Jack, I think you're really in a good place. Um, H, uh, yeah, castle's queen side, and then H4, H5, and, uh, and you're solid. You're in good shape here. Um, F6, bishop H6, uh, white's, uh, white's got a lot of chances. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, just, uh, uh, everything, I mean, this, uh, I'm trying to think of a way that you can, um, uh, uh, or when when you would know to attack the king side here, um, I think it's just a you know the king is the most valuable piece on the board, so putting pressure on it in general is probably good. But I'm thinking also um, you know uh, the uh, in the center here, um, black has a lot more defensive resources. If you're kind of pushing hard along the edge, there aren't that many pieces um, that black can use to defend against you. Like this knight maybe, but not even because it's got the pin on the d8 queen. Um, you know f6, h6. These these um, you know uh, black's pieces are not oriented towards defending on this point of the board, and white's pieces are actually oriented towards attacking quickly on this side of the board. Um, so since that's black's biggest vulnerability and uh, and white's biggest strength in terms of piece placement, um, I think that uh, I think that's where to go. Uh, there's, you know, there's only like two pieces like, but black has that are facing there, and white has like at least four. So like this, you know, this bishop, I'll, I'll say is a defensive piece. This knight probably is also a defensive piece, but not a, a very usable one at the moment. Um, but white has a big difference here between this rook, this knight, this queen, this bishop. They're all facing the king side, or or will be used as effective attacking pieces. And because it's four to two there, there's no other place on the board where your advantage is that large. So I think that's probably why that it's time to come up with a quick attack on the king side. Um, that's the correct uh, the, that's the correct strategic uh, play. Um, uh, going back to this, um, uh, I think uh, I think one of the things that uh, that um, Black is hoping for in uh, flank opening versus center opening is just moves like e5, uh, like overextending your pawn center. Um, uh, so you know, be a little bit extra wary when um, the Black play when Black plays uh, uh, you know modern uh, or perk or uh, king uh, Indian defense. Um, be more, be a little bit more attentive to uh, to playing moves like e5 or d5 because that's frequently uh, the target of, of Black's plan in those openings. Um, uh, here, um, Bishop takes g2 and White can play Knight takes f7. Uh, this is a tough tactic to see. Uh, so here, King takes f7, Bishop takes e6, King e8 forced. Um, and then bishop takes e7, and then you have a discovered either check to bishop d5, so, so then king takes d7, and then discovered check with the bishop, or the other way, um, uh, bishop takes, queen takes, and then bishop goes like somewhere. Uh, bishop goes to uh, uh, d4, d5, and you have this discovered uh, check on the queen uh, instead. Uh, so like queen play is like bishop e5, and then bishop takes g2. Um, so you'll have a discovery chance with bishop takes e7. Um, the other ways uh, that white can do this, knight takes, king, rook, knight takes, rook takes, bishop takes e6, wins this uh, rook, and uh, potentially this knight on e7. But, uh, but knight takes f7 is a tactical play here. Um, here, uh, yeah, no, no, so, so that's, you know, that's um, uh, definitely something. Um, yeah, it's just, just a tactic there. Um, and then, uh, and then I think, 
Yeah, I mean, uh, with kind of White's attack subsided, uh, so what happens here? Rook e4. Um, yeah, and then this loses, and then Rook h1 hangs the knight, unfortunately. Um, yeah, no, no, tactics. It's all, it's all tactics training. Until you get to 2,000, tactics training. Uh, and then you're good. Um, but I would say rook e4 here now. And, uh, and this queen, uh, you know, it, it, the, the knight doesn't hang. Uh, rook h1, queen f4, and, uh, and this knight hangs. So, um, so that was, uh, that was sort of the, the final, um, uh, that, that was, that was the final decisive thing. Um, but here, uh, yeah, you're pretty much, uh, yeah, all right. So the game, you know, the big, uh, places in this game, uh, where improvements could have made, made, I think, um, uh, so attack on the, so, so, so the strategic plan, so I think from here, everything's good. You get a good, uh, good center, good development. Um, uh, but here the plan, uh, you know, this is, this is a, uh, conceptual thing like th the plan is to attack the king side you have four pieces facing towards the king and um, and black only has two that are effectively defending maybe even one and a half uh, so that's uh, that's your biggest relative vulnerability and, and that's why this attack would be uh, would be um, effective uh, the second thing um, uh, here um, uh, e5 um, is an overextension of the pawn center, uh, one that uh, one that Black's hoping for when he plays the modern or perk. Uh, be careful playing moves like that. Um, the the it sort of goes with the first idea, which is that the plan is is better on the king side than the center. But um, uh, definitely always be wary about playing e4 e5 d5. Um, and then there's just sort this sort of tactics at the very end, but. Um, but overall, uh, an interesting game. You got you were off to a great start. Uh, this um, you know this position is up 1.15. White has a clear initiative. Um, looks uh, looks pretty solid for White. Um, but it uh, but the the wrong I think I think um, the correct plan was uh, h4 h5 and uh, and that's a successful plan. Um, uh, in the future, I would aim towards uh, towards playing a plan like that when uh, you're seeing a flank opening. Um, yeah, the idea was to blunt your bishop. Uh, just oh, on uh, uh sorry, on uh, which move, uh, Jack? On um, this is better. You know, I think this is better for. Um, I mean, white is, white is better here for. Uh, you know, by a good amount. Um, 1.3 eval. Uh, yeah, no, no, for sure. Uh, that makes sense too. Um, but it's just, it's, it's, uh, too easily undermined, I think. Uh, d6 sort of undermines this e5 pawn and, uh, and it's a difficult situation for, uh, for white. Um, just, uh, just be wary of those overextensions in, um, uh, you know, the modern perk Kings and Indian defense openings. Um, all right, cool. Uh, on to the last game. Sorry, we've gone uh, we've gone a good amount over today. Um, I'll uh, I'll go through this pretty quick. Um, this is Willem's game, um, and uh, but yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for sending it, Jack. Uh, really interesting. Um, but I think I think choosing the king side plan because that's where you had the biggest advantages on the board. Um, that would have been the the play. Um, uh, yeah, potentially. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, because black will ha probably have to play um, c6 or knight d7. Um, so that, that can be a tactical resource to, uh, to make the b7, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, bishop weaker uh, by blocking it, uh, Hyperion. Uh, yeah, no, interesting point. Um, yeah, no, thank you very much for uh, sending the game, Jack. And uh, yeah, please, uh, please keep sending them. Um, super helpful, super interesting. Um, sorry we've gone so long today, and uh, thank you very much for sticking around. And, uh, and Willem as well, thank you very much for sticking around. I'll, I'll try to, I'm really going to try to make these uh, go to an hour and a half because uh, I've, been, I've been doing this a bit slowly. Um, but thank you very much uh, all for being here and thank you all for contributing. Um, this is Willem's game. Uh, Willem plays white.
um, trades off into an opposite color or a, a, a knight and pawn endgame. Um, interesting. Uh, and. Yeah. Uh, looks pretty draw ish, right? I think this is a draw. Yep. Ends up being a draw. Hey, Electric Horse, welcome back. Thank you for joining the stream. Um. No, no, no worries, Ophelia. No, no, I, 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 um, I wanted to take a, and not all of that was on your game. I, I wanted to answer some questions about training strategies, um, and I did that while I was looking at Ophelion's game. But um, I do think uh, I do think I should speed it up because because uh, um, uh, I don't want to keep people first. Among other things, I don't want to keep people waiting uh, uh, longer than an hour and a half to get to their games. Um, uh, yeah, but now we're on the last one, so nobody's waiting, so uh, so we can uh, give Willem's game as well the the time that uh, the time that we can. Um, okay, so from here it looks about equal. Uh, let's go to the opening. Uh, it ends up being a minor uh, minor pawn end game, or a minor piece end game. Um, this uh, you know this is Cillian Alpin. Um, this tends to be good for White uh, and good if it uh, simplifies this way. Um, black and white have a symmetrical, um, uh, you know, have a symmetrical pawn structure. They both have an open C file, uh, so the normal characteristics of like rook C8 are not um, uh, as strong there. Uh, you know, basically, you know, one of the main inequalities in the Sicilian opening is running the E4 pawn against the C5 pawn, and then the rook uh, gets um, the rook on uh, for black gets to get posted on the C8. Uh, file and uh, and control the C file. Um, bishop to D2, Queen A5, Bishop takes B4, Queen D2, Queen takes, Knight takes, Knight E7, Bishop B5. Okay, um, awesome. Uh, now we're in. You know, basically, it feels like this game is really pretty close to equality, um, which I guess can happen in the Sicilian Alpin, right? I mean, the the center is symmetrical. Um, White has like uh, you know a lead in the center. Um, but uh, overall, um, this you know ends up being sort of drawish. Uh, knight g6, g3, knight g4, and really very equal game. Um, you know when you have a game this equal, I sort of wonder if you're supposed to set up like a uh, you know a, a bit or longer term plan that has the potential to give you an edge. Um, this just turns very drawish. Uh, I want to make sure I know exactly where it goes from being white initiative to uh, to equality. Um, here, knight to c3 um, continues white's development in a pretty healthy way. Uh, I think this was better than uh, than bishop takes b4. I think bishop takes b4 is what steers this towards a draw. Um, simplifying for white uh, was not particularly good here. Um, here, queen d2, and then the queen trades off, and then you're basically already in a position where you know, white has a better center. White has maybe one extra developing move, um, but the uh, but basically the initiative that white generally has is really diminished here. Um, I think uh, I think here instead, um, uh, knight to c3. Um, I understand that you're getting attacked um, and that this you know maintains tension, um, but uh, quicker development as opposed to development as opposed to trading down. I think increase white's winning chances here. Um, this gets way, you know, it gets way more drawish than uh, than I think um, uh, White would prefer. Uh, so here, um, yeah, I mean, basically, this this is a little better for White. Maybe um, this was an opportunity where, you know, maybe White had some corralling the knight chances, but a game that's pretty much dominated by uh, the, um, the opportunity to uh, to turn into a draw. Uh, and it did. I mean, it basically played off almost completely equally the entire game. Uh, there was a blunder here. Uh, it looks like a tactical error. Uh, here, knight takes d5, e takes d5, king d5, king d4, king c6, and then king e5 um, would have won, actually. Uh, so white got an opportunity in the end game here. That's an improvement. Um, uh, this sort of highlights the value of opposition. Um, so with uh, with pawn takes here, um, white seizes the opposition with e f with uh, d4, and either way he's going to win this pawn. Um, this is actually a pretty important concept. Uh, this pawn is uh, is isolated, 
and the king, uh, the black king is, um, uh, you know, held by white's opposition here. Uh, the king either way, king there, and then king there, and then the king can't defend. Um, king there, and then king there, and then the king can't defend. Um, and these pawns will uh, will eventually run out of moves as well. Um, uh, it's a good question. Um, uh, good question, Electric Horse. Um, uh, you know, um, it's true. Uh, you know, at a, at um, non-master level, uh, you know, drawing is a lot less common, and uh, and um, wins are a lot more common for black. Um, so I don't think it's the most important thing. Uh, I think the most important thing at um, you know submaster level is uh, you know tactical you know better exploitation of tactical situations. Um, that's probably the most important characteristic. Uh, this um, you know that said, uh, you know being the attacker um, at submaster level can occasionally be very valuable. Um, the concept of you know basically practical compensation is more and more of a concept. Um, uh, at the, you know the lower the rating, the more important practical compensation is. Um, so initiative is important at um, the non-master level in the sense that it can turn into attacks. Um, you know if white hasn't the initiative, if white has like you know a one or two move tempo situation, um, he can turn that into it an attack, uh, and that atta being on the attacking side is going to be um, uh, more valuable. I really love that tactics. I love that tactics uh, uh, emote. Um, it's so nice of them to make it because it's really funny. And I like I like the uh, the one with sunglasses too. Um, it's awesome. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a good question, Electric Horse. And um, uh, I um, uh, I think basically um, you know using the white can use the tempo or black can use one tempo to um, uh, you know, start an attack. And because um, the tactical play is a little bit more rough at class level, uh, you know, being the attacker offers you opportunities to win uh, in a way that it might not if the play, uh, you know, if the tactical play were a bit cleaner. Um, so that's where I think the real advantage in, in having the initiative um, is. Uh, there's always an advantage in having the initiative um, you know, at mass, you know, at grandmaster level, somewhere above where I am for sure. Um, you know, being able to push that tempo into the end game um, is the way that you would win. Uh, but at um, uh, class level, that tempo is similarly valuable. Um, it offers you an opportunity to become the aggressor in the game, and that has a lot of value from a practical perspective in uh, you know in a tournament game. Um, you know, just giving your opponent the opportunity to miss like a mate in three or, uh, you know, a one piece in three moves, um, you know, th you'll get good returns on that um, at class level. Uh, and that's sort of what you're playing for when you have a time advantage. Uh, so, you know, the, at the end of the, the game, you know, at the end of the, the day, um, keeping the initiative is very important uh, for, you know, Differing reasons generally, um, you know, at different or, or reasons of varying importance at, at different levels. Um, but uh, keeping tempo, if you can, is is still uh, very important. But uh, but tactics become a higher and higher um, uh, percentage of the play, uh, you know, um, uh, below master level, or, or or tactics become a much bigger differentiator in most games um, in uh, at class level. Uh, so, anyways, it's it's a really good question, uh, 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 Electric Horse. But I I would vote that time is always important um, uh, because time offers you the ability to uh, to turn into it an attack. Um, okay, uh, this is um, uh, you know this is a drawish game for uh, for White. Um, hey, thank you very much for the follow uh, uh, edit. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you uh, very much for joining the stream. Um, but here, uh, I mean, it's an idea. You know, that's that's my take on it. Electric. I hope that's uh, I hope that's somewhat helpful. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, differing differing reasons. But time is always important. You know, in chess, like time is the only thing. You know, chess as in life, as you know, uh, to put it in a, a kind of ridiculous way. Like, you know, the only thing you can't get back is time. 
Um, you know, other things you can always get back, but the only constant in chess is that it's always you making one move and the other person making one move. Um, there's no other rule in chess that holds as, as solidly as that one. That one is absolutely always true. Um, so time is always important, and, and doing things as efficiently as possible um, and gaining time with them uh, is, uh, is always really important in chess. Um, anyways, that's... Uh, that's um, uh, yeah, no, I, you know, I, I, I'm joking around and, um, I don't think it's, I don't think it's as, uh, I don't mean to be philosophical about it, but, um, uh, but it's always one move for you and one move for him. Um, so, uh, so it's important that you make your moves better. And if you get an opportunity to, uh, to, um, to gain some time on that one move versus one move setup, uh, it's definitely worth doing it. Um, anyways, uh, this, um, uh, yeah, this this game played out very equally. Um, the one improvement that I'm going to offer, just as a takeaway for this, uh, is uh, is I think you should keep the material on the board. Um, this uh, is one of those cases where you know the situation just became overly simplified. Um, if you develop straightforwardly here, uh, you know basically you you're trading off developed piece for developed piece here, um, and that's going to lead you towards a drawish situation. Um, but uh, this, um, uh, you know, so, so, so this, this leads things in a drawish way. Uh, I, would, I would play knight c3 here, keep material on, and, uh, and maintain some of the pressure. Um, that will decrease uh, drawing chances. Um, uh, there are still some opportunities for white and black here. Um, that, uh, that one I picked out in the king, the, the king and pawn end game is important. Um, this... Uh, this um, basically, sorry, it was this opposition problem. Um, white could do a little bit better here, uh, offering to trade off the knights here. Um, uh, knight take knight, pawn take knight, seize opposition with e4, um, and uh, and then I and then you know black might do some stuff with his pawns or whatever, but eventually uh, the king's going to have to move to one direction. And uh, you always have this h3 move to burn as well. Um, uh, you can play there, and then uh, and then eventually the king is gonna the, the king the black king that's lost its opposition um, is gonna have to move off of the defensive that d5 pawn, and uh, and that's gonna be good for white. Um, is trading instead of the knight e1 move is trading bishop for knight okay? Uh, I just want to see on a move. Um, Uh, sorry, I just want to make sure I, I, I give you the, or I'm looking at the right move here, uh, uh, electric horse. Is that on a move, um, uh, like, like around here somewhere, right? Like move, uh, 20 or so? It was in the okay later stages. Gotcha. Let's take a look. Um, here, okay. Uh, let, yeah, let's take a look at this position. Um, uh, so the knight is pinned. Okay, on c six. Um. I would not trade the bishop for the knight here, uh, just as a general endgame principle. Um, I would keep things. Uh, I would keep things materially even. Um, so like here, yeah. So here, like on this move, is uh, was bishop takes c six ever a playable idea? Um, I guess I, I would probably say no. Uh, you know, well, I don't know. I mean, it's sort of interesting. I mean, the um, the bishop uh, has. You know the bishop can't attack any of your pawns, so that actually is something that leads the knight to be relatively valuable. Yeah, no, no, no. All yeah, all the pawns are on light squares, right? Um, interesting. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting way to play it. I mean, out of instinct, I always 
uh, I so so yeah, I probably answered that too quickly. This is actually pretty interesting. Um, it's going to be a very complicated uh, uh, minor piece endgame, um, but uh, potentially, potentially super interesting. Yeah, no, 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 you're completely right about that, Electric. Uh, I agree with you. Um, interesting concept. Uh, hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, that's like a really, I mean, that's, you know, that's a GM level question, to be honest. That's a really tough question. Uh, I think, um, uh, King E3, Knight D2, Knight E4, Knight D6 is a really interesting tactical play. Um, basically, if you're, um, I, uh, the answer is this does look fine for white. Uh, so practically here, um, very interesting idea probably ultimately fine for white. Um, the one thing about it that is important is that um, in this situation that's important is on bishop takes knight, bishop takes bishop, uh, you know, you need to keep the situation closed. Um, you know, my my gut here tells me that pretty much regardless of what you do, minor piece and rook endgame with equal material, it's going to be a draw. Um, but it's it's a draw. Uh, you know, it, realistically, it's it's a draw. Um, almost regardless of what, what you do. Um, but, uh, this was interesting. Um, you know, basically the goal of white here would be to trade off and win, would basically win a pawn and then, um, uh, you know, trade the knight for the bishop once you are up that pawn. That's, uh, that's white's strategy here. Um, it's, yeah, tough question. Um, uh, things you don't want to do as white, you wouldn't want to make the position more open. Um, yep, knight to d6, get the knight posted on a square uh, where it's strong, for sure. Yep, make, no, makes sense. Um, I like the idea. Uh, and I guess I would just say, um, yeah, knight to d3, knight to c5, knight to e4, and uh, we're, yeah, we're black is, uh, you know, white getting good advantage advantages out of that night um but it's tricky uh i don't know um yeah 98 looks pretty powerful there it's probably a draw it's probably a draw but the the um the uh yeah, the things you don't want to do uh, are let the king in to uh, uh, white's um, territory. Like, don't let the king get past to the fourth rank, and uh, and don't open the position. Um, this is a good one for, like, uh, an engine study. Um, an engine study would come up with some aggressive lines. But the answer is yes, it is playable there. Um, but in terms of looking at this game, uh, I guess I would say the biggest pieces to change um, were, uh, were avoiding that very drawish uh, middle game. Um, and then, uh, and then there's this improvement uh, in terms of um, securing the opposition. Knight takes d5, pawn takes d5, uh, king d5, king, king d4, and uh, and white has the opposition and is winning. Um, those are the big pieces. Uh, it's, an, it's an extremely good question, uh, Electric Horse. Um, but uh, I, I think um, I think it's best suited by like uh, you know engine analysis, and uh, it's a it's a, a very big question. Um, it's a very big question, and it's probably the end. Um, the end result is that it's going to be a draw, because uh, because you know minor piece end games are hard. Basically, you know you have to really outmaneuver your opponent or get two pawns ahead. Because at any point there, you can basically trade your minor piece for um, for a pawn, uh, and uh, and really increase the chances that it becomes a draw, because uh, the minor piece by itself can't mate, right? So. Um, that's uh yeah so that's it um good question though great question um uh, if you want to take a look at the um uh you can definitely set it up on your own board and run some uh, some complicated engine analysis um uh, my guess is that it's a draw um and the answer to your question narrowly is yes um trading that uh, bishop for that knight in this situation where all of the pawns are on the opposite color of the bishop and the position is relatively closed probably is a uh you know it, it is it is playable for white um, in this particular case, 
Trading the bishop for the knight in an endgame is usually not a good idea, but here uh, here it works and provides an, a complicated endgame in which white has chances but will probably be a draw. Um, overall, uh, thank you very much for bearing with me as I went way over on this stream. I'm going to really try to speed things up because um, I, I feel bad making people wait for, uh, for long times, but you guys are all sending uh, such great material and such interesting things um, that, uh, that I wanted to make sure that I gave the full time to it. Uh, this is this was a long one. I, I don't think we'll uh, we'll have too many sessions that are this long. Um, but I appreciate everyone who's uh, who's um, you know here till the end, and I appreciate all the help that you've provided uh, in providing really interesting, thoughtful material to the stream. Um, so thanks all for that, and uh, have a very good day. Um, the next lesson starts at um, uh, 6:05 p.m. Eastern, and uh, thank you all very much for sending material and for participating. Um, have a great day, everybody. Bye.